You know, Kevin, it's the year 2015. I don't know if you're aware of this. I don't know if you know, I don't know, like, how up to date, you know, it... I don't know if Ohio has the year 2015 yet, but uh, no, I. it's year 2015. <laughs> I only say this because I'm sitting here on my laptop, and it's just like I've got all these wires and shit just strewn everywhere. I've got like six different monitors, and I thought for sure like that there'd be just an app, right, that would just make all this shit work. Like I could just podcast into my phone. Like, you know, I just put on Bluetooth headsets, and like uh, I'll go to the bar and drink a margarita. You go to the bar, you drink a margarita, and we just podcast, and you know, full HD, flack, whatever, without any of this horse shit. But, but no, <laughs> no, it's basically still the equivalent of tying uh, two cups together with a string. Welcome, everybody, to the Rage Slate Podcast. I am Jeff. And Kevin, you're back. Hello. Yay. I'm back, I guess. <laughs> Don't sound so enthusiastic, man. Come Ooh. on. This is the week that the Avengers 2 comes out. You know, that's... I- I guess what the people, the the dirty people in Europe got it first, so I'm a little disappointed in Marvel that yeah. uh, we come in second, even though we're, a, you know, probably their bread and butter, but. <laughs> <sighs> well, they get everything else second. I mean, for God's sake, like, I remember it used to be that what they got, that it took them like, what, six months or something to get all, every new video game that came out. Like, there was this huge delay between, uh, between when it came out in the U.S. and when it came out everywhere else. No, that's true. I Look, I'm I'm happy for them. I think you know, rock and roll. They should be able to, uh, um, be able, you know, to have it. But there's already like some websites like spamming my Facebook with uh, potential um, spoilers. Spoilers, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to read them. I I want to see the movie. I don't want to already have spoilers when the movie's not even out here yet. Like. <laughs> Well, yeah. guess what, Kevin? I got to see it <laughs> on oh. Monday. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, do you want me to tell you all the spoilers? Is that, no. uh, is that what you want to see? No. Was, but, well, did uh, you like it? Did you think it was good? Or it's uh, it's interesting. I I I liked it. I really want to see it again. Like, there's a couple there's a couple things. Like, I'm starting to wonder whether like um, I was just I've been thinking about like whether it's possible to do a sequel to a movie that doesn't like just drastically alter the structure of that movie that is going to have as much of a wow factor on you as the first one did. Because like when the original Avengers came out, it was at the end of that phase one, which kind of seemed to take forever. Uh, and now it just seems like there's a new Marvel thing just yeah. every four days. <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. And uh, yeah. I mean, like I, I think about like when I saw The Winter Soldier and how I liked that because it was so much different than the first Captain America movie. And Avengers Two is definitely it's it's more complex than the first one. Um, I just need to I need to see it again. I mean, sometimes when I see like a sequel to a movie, I mean, like I remember when I saw The Dark Knight, I was real ambivalent about it when I first came out of it. And since then, I mean, I have been on this show for years talking about I have some some problems, but all in all, <laughs> I still really like it as a movie. Um, and so. Right. You know, you're sitting in a you're sitting in a theater with a bunch of people who are all super excited to see Avengers two. And we were also watching it in three D, which I'm not I'm not good. I'm not good at three D, Kevin. I'm not I don't know, it's oh. just like wearing a pair of weird sunglasses for two hours. It's weird. Um you know, I'm I'm not much into going in the theater and seeing it. I might go to the drive in that we have out here and watch it there because that way nobody's gonna be sitting next to me giggling like a mad fiend or something when the Hulk shows up or whatever. Um, but I like all the superhero movies. Uh, when I was a kid, they had like no superhero movies. I mean, they had Superman, you know, and they had those Batman movies that Tim Burton did and stuff. But for the most part, your superhero movie was few and far between. And now we had the Spectre and <laughs> the Shadow. Come on, don't don't. <laughs> Dick Dolph Tracy Lundgren's with Madonna. The Punisher. I mean, come on. Oh, there were all kinds yeah. of stuff. Blade One, Two, Electra. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff wasn't good. Things have gotten a lot better, mostly. And um, so, you know, I enjoy watching. But, you know, I expect there to be some lemons as well. I mean, they can't have this ongoing perfect track like record of making movies about superheroes. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy, that was a surprise to me. I thought that was going to be a total piece of crap. Um, Ant-Man, I'm interested in in seeing how that's going to be. Man, I feel like that could really go either way. Uh, Like, I look at the trailer for that, and it's just like, this could be... Like unbelievably, like charming and and surprising, or it could just be some kind of like really rote paint by numbers type of thing. Like I like I really didn't care very much. Uh, not I mean, 
the first Thor movie was okay, but like the second Thor movie, I, I, it was largely forgettable to me. <laughs> like I just like uh, people the, said, Doctor... a lot of people said that one was better than the first one, and I enjoyed the first one, and the second one to me seemed yeah like weirder or something. Like it just didn't seem to. I don't know. Like the end fight was like in a desert somewhere. Like it didn't have the same kind of glory to it that the first one had. I don't know. That was wasn't the, well, the fight at the end of the first one was just in a town of the desert, wasn't it? <laughs> um, well, I mean, I don't know. I was like, yeah, that's true. But the ice giants and stuff were interesting. You know, this was just like some angry dudes, aliens. You know, I don't know. I you know the the biggest the biggest problem that I had with the first Thor movie was when I watched it it was it, it was one of those things that I feel like they've been having to tiptoe around through the second Thor movie and through the Avengers and and even they there's just some lip service in the Avengers too it's like what what exactly is it? I mean I don't think Natalie Portman is like a horrible chud or anything and she's not <laughs> dull but like this guy is this Asgardian super god and she's like I like science and I like to drive. <laughs> into tornadoes and it's like okay that's cool for you and everything but like why 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 does he care about her i mean gamora right she's like an ass kicking assassin from another the the black widow is you know this this ex kgb super agent natalie portman's just i mean i don't i just never understood why i was supposed to give two shits about her and then in the second movie it's like they made her into like Nancy Drew. She's walking around trying to figure <laughs> shit out, and I'm just like Raiders of the going, Lost like, Ark or something. Right? Yeah. Like, would you guys just fucking kill her off and make Cat Dennings the main character? Because I'm <laughs> way more into her. She's weird and quirky and has a bunch of like, you know, Stellan Skarsgård and and Cat Dennings are like his, you know, his little Doctor Who sidekicks that could go along with him, and that'll be great because they're all crazy. Um, now, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 Thor's. Quirky. I'm not sure they're going to make another Thor. I don't remember. They, they, but they keep grinding these things out. Some of these guys are going to get too old, though. They're going to have to start getting replaced. Um, like Robert Downey Jr.'s, you know, I think they renewed him or something. But, um, you know, like Hugh Jackman's going to do one more Wolverine or something. And, and then they're going to have to get somebody else. And it hopefully isn't going to be like Justin Bieber. Or something, because uh... dude, that would be awesome. Justin Bieber is the new Wolverine. Oh, I'd pay such money to see that movie. And he's fighting against uh, Lady Deathstrike, played by Selena Gomez. Oh my god! Oh my god! I, there's a certain part of me that's like, it's. There's been so many good Marvel properties out there. That I'm just like, can you guys make a few just total train wrecks, like? <laughs> I miss Electra, you know, or or uh, you know, it's great that we have this good Daredevil series. But I used to be able to get drunk and watch that Ben Affleck Daredevil and just go, yeah. God, what a piece of shit this is. It, it might be the new Fantastic Four that's coming out because I am not interested in that at all. I think that's going to be terrible. What do you think? What do you? What do you? Uh, we've had. I think the. I what, God, did I talk to you the last time there was a new Star Wars trailer out? Was that when you were on the podcast the last time? I don't uh, know. I, I don't think it was with me, no. Okay, because I think we got to do a whole Star Trek, Star Wars thing last time. But, I mean, did you see, you saw the new Star Wars trailer, obviously, oh, yeah. that came out. Yeah. And, the, yeah, and Batman great. and stuff like that. Um, which, I mean, what do you think, what, which of these summer movies do you think is, is kind of the highest on your list? Do you think it is the Avengers? Yeah, I think so. At this point, I don't, I, you know... Um... I guess yeah. there's not really a whole hell of a lot else. I mean, I guess Grant and I went down the schedule, and there were a few things on there, but um, but it's not as it doesn't seem like it was as, it's quite as packed as like last year or the year before, where it just seemed to be like thing after thing after thing coming out right. constantly. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know when some of these movies are supposed to come out, and versus Chris, you know, these Christmas movies, like you know, they show the trailer to Batman versus Superman. That's not coming out to what next year or something. So yeah, it's kind and of, I think what. Know, you, Star you know, Wars people, is until Christmas. People are showing like you know Jared Leto's Joker and uh, for um, Suicide Squad and everything, and that doesn't come out until next summer or something. So I mean, you know, it's hard to keep track of what's actually uh, coming out next, you know, because they're constantly pushing stuff a year ahead of time. But you know, I don't know. Hey, but no more Hobbit movies, so I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> until they decide to that. make the uh, the. Cimmerillion series, Cimmerillion, yeah, yeah, similar. yeah, exactly. Uh, man, I just, yeah, I did not, 
Like, I actually saw a, I saw a thing online where somebody's going back through to try to re-edit all of the Hobbit movies into, <laughs> like, one 90-minute movie, right? And just, like, just whole cloth ripping out, like, 30-minute chunks of the movie to try to get try to get it down to a, a feasible thing. And the problem with it is that apparently because of the way that the soundtrack is integrated in the movie, you end up with these weird cuts where it's like the music starts to swell a lot, and then it just, like, cuts to a scene, like, two minutes, <laughs> like, 20 minutes later in the movie. Ah, uh, oh, shit. Um. Yeah, I was trying. I, I, there's something else I was gonna say. Uh, but I've totally, totally lost it. Yep. Uh, so Avengers was, yeah, Avengers was good. I, I think that people cool. are gonna like it. I think it's gonna be. Oh no, I was gonna ask you what you did. You mentioned the Jared Leto Joker. What you actually thought about that whole thing, or if you have strong feelings. Really, I mean, when I saw way. it, I, you know, I thought it was different, but I, I, I really did think like that's not really going to be what it is. Like, I just, <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I, I felt like it was like some trickery that they were doing to like fool people into thinking, you know, so they could, cause why would you reveal it like that? You know, like that's just <laughs> the, the cause like distress and everything. And then he's going to show up in like a, a purple suit, you know, with a, you know, with a tie and a handkerchief and all that stuff. And he's going to look completely normal. For the Joker, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but plus, I'm I'm more interested in just seeing Harley Quinn. Um, you know, I don't care so much about uh, Jared Leto, to be honest with you. So, um, but I like it was the, interesting. I, I like the idea that that David Ayer was like, "Hey, Jared, hey, let's break the internet this weekend. Like, come over to my house. <laughs> right. I got this guy. He like he's gonna do some body paint on you. And we're just gonna we're just gonna make this shit look." fucking stupid and then we're gonna yeah. like tweet it out <laughs> and we're just gonna sit back with some popcorn and watch the nerds heads explode i mean i seriously think that's what they they did i think you're totally right i mean maybe he'll have those metal teeth or something but i i don't think he's gonna have those tattoos like he's got that tattoo on his forehead or something that says disturbed or something on it it's it's ridiculous that's yep. that's not gonna be in the movie i mean that's just there's no way there's no way the only one of the tattoos that, like it, like I looked at, that kind of made sense to me uh, after after a minute, right? It, it, I have to give like full credit to John Sitton, who records with me all the time, because he's the one who pointed this out to me. The only one that kind of made a little bit of sense is that the the big smile on on the bottom of his arm, right? Is that if you can imagine, like in the movie, him like holding somebody hostage by putting that arm like around their head, that that smile would then be kind of like in the place where their mouth would normally be so it's it kind of <laughs> looked i'm like oh okay all right i could see Ooh, that I wow it's that. putting some thought into that i don't know <laughs> i i don't see that happening but um we'll see you know yeah. show me some other characters as well if you're gonna show him show me everybody um i don't know yeah no i i i agree i, I it's weird i i have probably uh, a very, I have a very tenuous uh, uh, level of emotional connection to the whole concept of the Suicide Squad. Like I watched, they put out that WB animated movie, and I thought, I thought it was okay. I it just, I watched it, and I was like, oh, you know, that's not. I, I just don't have as much of a connection to those villain characters. Right. Um, and so I don't know. I mean, you know, I like the. The, the the thing that John and I talked about last week on the podcast is like no matter how mad I am about any of this stuff, I'm gonna watch it, right? No matter how dull the the Fantastic Four trailer looks, which I actually thought the last one didn't look too bad, I'm still gonna see it. I mean, you know, right. I'm gonna right. I'm gonna go watch it. I'm not gonna sit at home and just go, eh, eh I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's uh, I am I, I am doing this shit. Like I can't exactly have no answer when I already get enough shit on on this show for not having seen things. Uh, like you would, <laughs> you would not believe the months and months of when I I, I gasp and grasp at your pearls. I revealed to the internet that I hadn't seen, I'd never seen Big Trouble in Little China, right? Oh, and everybody was just like, oh, oh my god, oh Jeff, <laughs> oh, stop what you're doing. And I I went to go watch it eventually, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is all right. Like you know, it's it's pretty good. Like I didn't see it when I was a kid, so I don't have that. Right, like, oh my god, right. I've never seen anything like this before. And right. then everybody just shakes it. Oh god. So I don't want it to be like that where people are like, where Jeff, what'd you think of the new Star Wars movie? And I just ah, you know, trailer didn't sell me on it, so I just decided, yeah, fuck it. Star Wars. I've seen enough Star Wars movies. I'm just gonna stay home and watch uh, uh Romancing the Stone, right? Well, the speaking, Golden Child. S speaking of your opinion, and you could always cut this part out um fifteen minutes in if uh, mm. you've already covered this, but uh 
what do you actually think's going on with Kojima? Oh man, um, I it's a it's a good question. I uh, we've we talked about this a little bit, and because I mean, we, we could just we could kind of just bleed over into the news. I was going to talk a little bit about the rage cast. We did. We can talk about that later. But um, this and and this is actually you're jumping stories on me too. I was building up for the perfect Batman segue, Kevin. God damn it. <laughs> but I had it. It was right there. That you're just you're, like, hey, Jeff. You, whoa, catch. Think you, fast. I'm like, oh, you what? Can, you can bring it back. You can bring it back. You can go no, from Kojima um, to Batman. No, so this week, uh, this week they had the news that people have been waiting for, or the kind of the question of Kojima leaving Konami, and then the question of well, what about Silent Hills? And you know, first Guillermo del Toro came out and was like, "No, I'm not doing it." Then Norma Reedus came out and he was like, "Yeah, it's a shame." And Konami was like, "No comment." And then, of course, you know, eventually they had to just be like, "Yeah, that we're not doing that anymore." I think they said that they're still keeping the name as a franchise that they want to look into doing, but just that whatever that is isn't happening. I honestly think that. Um, it, I mean, you know, this just full blown, like out of left field, crazy conspiracy. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. There's a couple. There's a couple things. Like one, one thing that I was talking. One uh, um, a theory that I had was that there might be some content in Ground Zeroes that Konami was like, you, you have to cut this out of the game. You have to. You can't have this. Is too much because, you know, Kojima's had. There's been some pretty, I mean, not even just uh, uh, Ground Zeroes, right, that had that kind of the audio tape of some pretty explicit sexual violence that people were very uncomfortable about. Right, uh, right. But, I mean, like, you go back to Metal Gear Solid 4, I say this all the time, you look at the, the story of the, the, the women in that game, the Beauty and the Beast core, and they were all these horrifically tragic backstories that were just incredibly difficult to listen to. So I almost feel like there might be a scenario where Konami was like, hey, you got to take some of this stuff out. And he's just like, nope, says my contract, I don't have to take anything out, fuck you guys, it's in. And they're like, no, 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 really, you have to take this out. And he's like, no, no, I'm not going to take it out, fuck you. I'm just like, it's my game, it's my last Metal Gear game, I'm going to do it the way I want to. Like, yeah, everybody's going to freak out. He's like, yeah, fuck you guys. And then finally they were just like, all right, well, then we're done. Because they went through that weird thing, right, where it's like they didn't announce that he left or that he, he announced that he left, but he was really vague about it. And then they, like, took his name off of all of the games. <laughs> right. <laughs> and to this day, that's the one part of the story that has me going, like, why would you Why would you do that? Like, I think there was some flimsy excuse where they said, well, we want to make sure that the, the brand is tied to Konami and not to Kojima. Yeah, right. It's like, it's like, what fucking, who cares about Konami? None of us give a shit about you anymore, except you've got, like, three franchises, apparently, that everybody cares about. You've got, you know, Metal Gear, you've got Silent Hill, and, uh, what, tennis or golf or one of those? <laughs> FIFA? No, it's a soccer game. It's a soccer game. Um, yeah, I heard that uh, the reason that uh, Konami's mad is that uh, Kojima would not let them use the Fox engine. The Metal Gear oh. Solid Five game engine, uh -huh. and uh, there was some dispute about that. Which, I mean, a lot of people were like, "Well, how can that be?" Because that you know, Konami owns it. But I guess I mean, it, like, it's one of those things that we talk about all the time on the show, where like, you know, uh, I'm I am not and have never been far enough into the industry to answer. To, to, to get information like that. And even if I was, nobody would tell me, right? Nobody would explain that. But you, you start to wonder, like, Kojima, you know, Hideo Kojima before was just basically like, you know, like a, a just a game developer, right? But then after the Metal Gear, when the kind of the Metal Gear Solid 4 era was starting to happen, you saw Kojima Productions. And you have yeah, to wonder, right. like, how much autonomy did that organization have? And, like, you know, if they... If they took their own like profit and capital to create the Fox engine, and then Kojima says, you know, we're done with this game, I'm leaving, and they're like, well, then give us your engine, and he's like, no, I developed that. I could see that. I could see that end up being a, a big point of contention between uh, between the two organizations. Yeah, I mean, if he was planning on taking it and leaving with it, sure. I mean, yeah. but that would be something for lawyers to completely, you know, drag out or something. I don't know. It's it's the weirdest thing I've seen in gaming in a long time when it comes to, like, you know, corporate stuff. Because it's not a flat-out firing. It's not like that Treyarch stuff. This is, like, a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, it, and, it's and, like, and, and like, it, like no, before, I mean, I'm sure, Kevin, that over the time that you've done this, you know, that you've been reporting on video games, that every so often this stuff... I, I feel like the same thing could be said last year with the whole um, uh, uh, Ken Levine... 
uh, 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 right. What right. Was, it, what was the name of that? Irrational? Was it Irrational games that made Bioshock Infinite? That that where it so. was like, uh, you know, one day I was just like, hey, everybody's fired. And everybody that I know, they're all like, right. why did this happen? And we, on the podcast, we talked about it saying, like, well, we'll probably not know for 10 years because there's no good right, reason. Right. If anybody inside of the industry talks to a journalist and that journalist publishes a story, yeah, they're going to get hits. They're also never going to get talked to ever again. Like, nobody's going to tell them anything ever because right, they know right. that it's just going to get out there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's – it's, But this is, like, weird because he's not fired exactly. At least that's what they're all saying, including, you know, himself. Yet that, you know, the other people, like that one voice actress is like, oh, yeah, he's fired. And then Konami's like, hey, don't you, you know, you're going to have to commit seppuku for saying that. He's <laughs> like, oh, I take it back. It's, uh, he's he's still working there or something. And you're just like, what the heck is going on? There's, like, there's something, I mean, you know, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, okay. What I, all I have to say is that, like, okay, if Kojima planned on leaving after, after the new Metal Gear game came out, then I don't think that he would have signed up to make silent hills right if his right. long-term plan all along had been i'm going to finish this game i'm going to leave konami i'm going to go do my own thing if that's the case right why would he even start up this bullshit this high profile you know guillermo del toro that's true big right. big franchise thing so something had to have happened that made him go nope fuck it i'm leaving and whatever that was i i don't think we'll ever you know i don't think well I, if we do know i think it will be a long time before we find out um because yeah, because if he had left amicably, then Silent Hills would probably still be going on. Like he'd be there as a you producer. You know, it's Japan too, so it it could be just some weird thing where he didn't bow properly. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, it's and it's doubly. I mean, you know, I I don't know I don't know enough about Japanese game development to say this for sure. But what I do know is that from my own experience, just reading video game websites, you see a lot less of this stuff come out of Japan because it seems like. Japanese business is better at just shutting the fuck up and not saying anything. Right. Like, everybody send just... the Yakuza over to... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Silence anyone who might uh, <laughs> spill the beans. I would pay good money for an interview at E3 with Kojima where a ninja was just standing behind him with his sword <laughs> the entire... Who's that guy? Don't worry about that guy. Don't worry. He's just... Why does he have Konami written on his gi? No, just don't worry about him. It's fine. I mean, but there's also another story this week where Konami delisted themselves from the New York Stock Exchange. Um, oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, I mean, it was weird because at, at first I think the people took it as a uh, uh, as a... Uh, a sign that the company might be in trouble, it might be failing or whatever, but then they came out kind of with a press statement that just said that, like, we don't really do as much, we don't really do that much buying and trading and selling of our own stock, so listing on the New York Stock Exchange costs us money and time and resources and stuff like that, and it's just, it doesn't do anything for us, because we're not, you know, big, huge traders that do, you know, they don't have as many shares and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's just some weird cool. shit going on. I mean, I don't know, man, we've yeah. seen... These old Titanic companies that have been around since you and I were, you know, kids playing video games, oh, yeah. start to go away. I, it would be weird to live in a world, or not, it would be weird. It'd be weird to end up telling stories like, you know, what's Konami, Grandpa? And I'd be like, uh, all right, well, back in the old days, they didn't used to just run pachinko parlors, all right, and sports clubs. <laughs> they used to make video games. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I think, you know, the... Um, one possibility too, I was thinking of is, but I, it's probably unlikely. But I mean, what if the next Metal Gear is just terrible? What if they went into play test it and it's just like your snake or something with a Zen garden, and that's all you're doing? You know, there's like no missions or anything, and they're like, "What is this?" <laughs> and you know, meanwhile, uh, Kojima's like, you know, driving around in a sports car with the hookers <laughs> and doing blow. And, uh, you know, this is the game's rubbish. And, the, you know, they're like, you're fired and, you know, we're taking all your stuff away. I, I don't know. Yeah, I maybe. I mean, I, I, see, I, I, I there's been a whole bunch of times where, you know, even when the story first broke, I was like, people, you know, they write in and they're just like, oh, Jeff, are you so sad that Kojima doesn't get to make Metal Gear games anymore? And I'm like, no, dude, he's been wanting to not make Metal Gear games for like 10 years now. <laughs> I'm like, let the, let the man go make the games that he wants to make. I don't care what they are, just as long as he wants to make them as opposed to, 
you know this sure. this uh, yeah this horrible the grind drudgery that he's been in. Um, it's not like Konami would stop making those games anyway. Like if he leaves to go do something, if Konami's still a company, it's a cash cow for them. You know they'll just keep making them. They'll just they'll put somebody else in charge. I you know it's uh, like a part of me a part of me wants to think that that's not true, but then there's the other part of me that knows that it's absolutely true uh, that they're just gonna. Like with uh, uh, Metal Gear Rising, they're just going to start giving the games over to like Platinum or other studios and start farming them out. Um, it's too big of a license not to. I mean, you know, it's just... It's just I, I, I can't see why they wouldn't. I start to wonder, though, that like if they do that, they've got to be really careful because I think that we saw... I think that we saw with um, uh, uh, DMC, right, that... Like, right, right. If you just if you just hand the Metal Gear franchise to just any old you know to I don't know pick some media middle tier garbage company right you hand it over <laughs> to them or you you hand it to like uh, Epic right and they come back with some kind of like chainsaw Metal Gear game and uh, and then the f- fans are just like oh my god no this is the worst this is not what I want this is garbage. Um, I don't. I don't want this at all. But then, who knows? I mean, I. I kind of get the impression that Konami is going to be that. that this is probably. You're probably going to start to see Konami move back. Like I was joking before to pachinko parlors and health clubs and the things, maybe mobile games and things like that. That I don't know if they're really in a position anymore. Like they don't necessarily have the brand recognition. I. I don't think at this point to push out non Kojima. I mean, they already pretty much all but killed the Silent Hill franchise, right? I mean, right. you like Silent right. Hill better than I have. What was the last great Silent Hill game? What, three? Yeah, like <laughs> the, yeah the second one, maybe. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in agreement with you. But at the same time, you know, the people making the decisions are usually idiots. So we'll see. Very maybe, true. Though Kojima has it in his contract where they can't make a Metal Gear game without him. That would be you know, so cool. <laughs> that would be possible. <laughs> That'd be great. As if, it, if like the only way they were able to get him to come back to make one more game was he was like, all right, but you got to promise that if I ever leave, <laughs> I get to take this franchise with me and just do whatever I want to with it. Uh, yeah. Well, speaking of franchises that people are doing whatever they want to with, I guess that's that's acceptable. Uh, let's let's. I got to tie it back <laughs> over to to Batman. There was a new there was a new Batman trailer uh, that came out called "All Who Follow You." Uh, and Kevin, you didn't actually did you not see this? You didn't see this one. I did not see this. Okay. No. This is really interesting because it actually uh, it actually shows us something that I think could be really, really interesting for this particular game. Uh, so it's, you know, it's your standard. It's got Commissioner Gordon. He's up. He's got the bat symbol. He's talking. He's, you know, blah, 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 blah. blah. And then the Mark of Night comes out or the Scarecrow <laughs> comes out and he's like, oh, I'm going to kill your babies or whatever. But then we start to see um, Robin and Nightwing and Catwoman uh, running around, like jumping around and, and punching people and doing stuff. And you start to see what I mean, the, the, they've come out and so, said that this is actually right now that the stuff that, that was shown in that trailer are actually cut scenes uh, or, or scripted events, right? But what you were seeing were these these situations where it's like um, like Catwoman or, or Nightwing like flips a, a, a bad guy over and then Batman like grabs his leg out of midair and like slams him into the ground. And so apparently this came with a press release that I kind of tried to find before we is started. It but Super I Smash Brothers meets Batman? Is that what we're saying? No, it's. Uh, did you did you play GTA Five? Sure. Uh, it's it's going to be character switching like in GTA Five, where you can play uh, okay. as any of the the extended Bat family. You can play as Catwoman, kind of like kind of like in our. Is that City. official? Did they did they say that, or are we guessing that that's what's going to happen? Uh, so here's the thing: I looked for this press release and I couldn't find it, but it's got a name. It's called Dual Play, uh, and it was in a press release. It's on a whole bunch of different Dual websites. Play. I swear to God, I'm not just making this shit up. <laughs> um, but it indicates that you're going to be able to actually switch on the fly between the different characters as you're playing through the game and that you're actually going to be able to use multiple characters in combat at the same time to pull off kind of like um, like cooperative super moves and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I mean, this is a quote from the press release about being able to seem... 
excuse me. I don't know if that's going to be good. About being able to seamlessly switch between the Dark Knight and his allies, including Robin, Nightwing, and Catwoman, in free flow combat. So, well, the combat part's fine, but if it's that crap where like I move one guy up to a point and then I can't do anything until I switch to the other guy to like activate the bridge mm-hmm. for him to cross, and then I got to switch back to him. You know that that's irritating to me. I don't I don't get into those games where I've got to like like that game. Did you play that game, Brothers? Where you had like mm-hmm. to control one brother with the left stick and the other brother with the right stick. I mean, it looked nice and everything, but what a, what a difficult thing to. It was just was not an enjoyable experience to play that game. I really like that game. I mean, it's I I will not I will not. Oh, the sit, control scheme was killing me. Yeah, I will not sit here and tell you though that it, it wasn't like I wish there was. I really wish that you could play that. I mean, I under, I really understand why they did that. Did you play the game all the way to the end? Like no, no they I, they kind of. Too- Take that control schema and like do something kind of interesting with it right at the very end of the game. And the game itself, you know, is only about three hours long. But yeah, it, it's everything in your brain is fighting you when you're playing that game. It's right, tight. exactly. What are you doing? Stop it! What is this? And you're just like, no, do two things at the same time. Your brain's like, no, I can't, I can't. Well, it would be especially irritating if there was guys punching you in the head like in a Batman game or something, and you were trying to move the characters around like that. But of course, that's not what it's going to be. But I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, maybe it'll be all right. I just, I, I just hope that it's. I just hope that when it all comes together, that it's. Uh, that they. I mean, the, the thing is that it would be ludicrous of them not to try to use that. Like, I really enjoyed in Arkham City the the Catwoman stuff. Uh, then that I guess that was like day one. Uh, um, like if you need to buy yeah. the game retail, yeah, I played. I played that. I know what you're talking about. Uh, but it, I thought it was great. I thought it added a different, like you know, she kind of controlled a little bit differently, and yeah. she kind of had her own little story. And I would love it if the whole thing at Arkham Knight with being able to switch between these characters is if it was like Grand Theft Auto V, where it's like maybe Batman gets into a jam, right, and now you've got to switch over to like Robin and get him out of that jam, or you got to switch uh, over to Catwoman or I something don't like know. that. I, I would rather it being chapter based or something because. I would rather it be, have, like, the personality of the different characters while you're playing them. Like, not just that they play different, but, you know, their their motives and their, uh, you know, the way they're going to go about things should be completely different than the way Batman would. I mean, Batman, you know, he's that guy. He's, he's, he's going to go into the bar and just start punching guys out or something. Where, you know, Catwoman might try and... Uh, slink in through a window in the back or something you know what i mean like it's just and if you're just able to like control different characters and have them all just run in whenever you want just punch a guy in the face or something it's it's less interesting to me yeah it's fun. But, it's now that you've talked about that it's actually it's weird because i'm thinking back to the trailers that we've seen previously that look like they have the batmobile and the flying integrated so much in the traversal between different parts of the city that you just have to go well is is Nightwing going to be able to use the Batmobile? Is Catwoman going to be able to use the Batmobile and (laughs) fly for some reason? I don't... uh, Because if not, they've shown that city to be so goddamn big and full of, like, you know, tanks and robots and drones and shit like that that it's like in Arkham City, it was just guys with pipes, right? So Catwoman, okay, fine, whatever, right? But, you know... Like, what's Catwoman going to do to a tank without her? Maybe she's got a Catmobile. <laughs> Maybe she's got a giant car that's got, like, a cat head glued on the front of it that shoots, like, missiles out of its eyes. It goes, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> <laughs> I am full of bad ideas today. I have got all the bad ideas that money could buy. Um, but you know what yeah, else? She'll have every every gadget that Batman has, but it'll just be cat-based instead of bat-based, right? Yeah, well, so. that was kind of... I mean, she had kind of a diff- a slightly different set of things in Arkham City, but, yeah, I mean, for the most part, it, it, it runs that weird line where you say, are we going to make, like, a whole different play style for these other characters? And if so, what does that mean for the design of the game world and how yes, much are the exactly. play as a player going to be able to take... Um, but speaking of bad decisions, the other big Batman announcement this week was that um, apparently uh, old Arkham Knight's going to have a $40 season pass. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's supposed to include a collection of skins, challenge maps, and racetracks, as well as story missions and more supervillains. But there's no indication currently of what exactly that means and it looks Race like tracks 
Yeah. Well, if you got a Batmobile, you got to put in you got to put in oh. some races. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me, that that sigh you just let out is exactly how I feel where I'm just Am I is this a this is a Batman game, right? This isn't you know, bat batio cart or something like that. Like this <laughs> cat, cat I mean, throws a banana peel out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Joker wipes out. <laughs> yep. Hits uh hits Bane with a blue blue turtle shell and he's like, God damn it. Dude, fuck it. Um <laughs> But I uh, there has actually been I mean, I, I like I don't really go in very much for the whole season pass thing. Like I don't I don't generally do them. Yeah, because, I don't either. Right. Uh, I play a game and then I'm done with it. But like, I I think have there, there been very many other games that had a forty dollar season pass? That seems like an awful lot. I think I've seen some that are. I don't. I, don't, I think they're average like twenty bucks. Yeah, twenty twenty five something like that. Forty dollars is forty dollars is high. And the other thing you you know is that if you if you can wait, there'll probably be a a platinum or gold version of the game released you know in a couple of years anyway that'll have all that stuff uh included you know for less than the price of the the original game so you know i guess it depends on how much you like batman or something i mean some kids are pretty crazy about that stuff they'll they'll, they'll spend the money you know they, they know what they're doing they're they're gonna gouge for it but you know people were kind of underwhelmed by the last batman game that came out so you know, if this game comes out and feels like more of the same, it's going to be like the Aliens uh, Colonial Marine, uh, ex- you know, season pass or whatever. Most people are going to be like, uh, the, the price is just going to get chopped. It's going to be like $10 or something. And then they're going to be like, never mind, we're not making it because nobody bought the game. Um, not that I think that'll happen, but I just think that uh, it could suck. Well, and then, it's, you know, you're spending $40 for something that, you know, might not uh, might not be fun. It mostly just, I mean, it, it almost seems weird. See, here's the problem. Is it, like, I don't, they haven't released any information about what the fuck, I mean, this that what I just said is what we know, right? Right. Um, right. So here's, the, I mean, here's the main problem with that is that if the if the story content because you know skins challenge maps race tra- it, go fuck yourself none of us give a shit about that WB like <laughs> nobody do- I don't care about playing Batman with the 1940s Batman F- fucking go you know just eat a dick um, <laughs> this is this is the place where I really ingratiate myself to get those review copies you know of the game from publishers um, but. Uh, the problem is that if the content, if the, what's left there is new story missions and villains, if that content is worth forty dollars, boy, that's a that's a that and and that's something that's being planned from day one. You just come back to that whole thing where you go, you know, are you, did you guys excise this content from the game in order to sell it digitally, or did you necessarily script in forty dollars, forty dollars worth, or even thirty dollars? You say all the rest of that shit's ten dollars, right? Thirty dollars worth of add-on actual narrative content that in order to actually play to get the full Quotey Fingers game that you're going to be paying a hundred dollars instead of sixty dollars. Like, I don't know. It just seems like if it's if it's if it's content that's worth forty dollars that it's going to feel like kind of a big ripoff because it's been taken out of the game and if it's not worth forty dollars then it's going to feel like a big ripoff because it's forty dollars for content that's not worth forty dollars but right right um it, i mean you know i just this whole dlc thing i don't like it every time they do this shit because like a forty dollar season pass means that two years from now it's a fifty dollar season pass and then it's a sixty dollar season pass and then, yeah. you know it just they keep edging that shit up and i I wish that I wish that I wish there was a way that we could make the the, the gaming industry or the gamers could come together to just say like hell no we won't po pay we won't pay for your forty dollars season passes like put all that shit back in the game we all remember when games well, were just yeah. the whole thing well especially those things where the where it's it is in the game and it's just unlocking it oh, you know yeah, what when I it's mean? on like the disc yeah it's already on the disc it's you've already got it you just can't play it. Unless you give them more money, that that irritates the hell out of me. I think that there should be a law. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I think there, I think in other countries there actually is a law, but uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, hopefully they'll give some more information about that uh, before before they, it actually comes out because that's some balls. But on the other hand, it is it is Batman, and people go fucking nuts for Batman. Like if they did the same thing with the new Halo. 
it would be like that. What was that one year where the Call of Duty was coming out? And they took away the ability to make local multiplayer servers, servers and everybody was like, sign this petition. We're not going to buy it. You won't make a cent. Bye. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody just bought it anyway because fucking it's Call right. of Duty and we don't want it. <laughs> um, Nobody even remembers that poll, you know. Yeah. What was that, like Modern Warfare 2 or something? <laughs> Uh, but speaking of Call of Duty, ah, look at that. That was a that was a seamless transition right there. Uh, <laughs> there was a new trailer that actually. So we've had a we had a, a teaser, super teaser trailer for Black Ops Three. It was just a bunch of uh, vocal samples from the previous games, uh, and then I think last week we had a uh, a trailer that was like live action, kind of this timeline of the world of you know because Black Ops One had that whole weird split and it was mostly cold war and then black ops 2 got into like the whole near future warfare and it looked like they were really pushing the timeline ahead for black ops 3 like the year 2560 or something like that like like some future shit uh and then this week they actually came out with like a full-on trailer trailer for uh mm. black ops 3 and you haven't seen that one either have you kevin i'm, a, I'm aware of it i didn't watch it okay i was like oh do you another black ops and yeah, it's funny because, um, like, it looks really, really good. Like, the graphics for it look really, really good. And I was reading uh, an article over on Polygon about this, and it looks like that they're actually trying to put, like, some, some people got a chance, some journalists got a chance to go see it, and it was running, it was like the first level, and it was on PCs, and it was running in 4K uh, as opposed to, 1080 uh and i it, i'm thinking that the trailer that i've seen might look so good because it might have been captured at 4k and then down sampled to 1080 um but it's it's like it's like super future it's like dude's got a robotic arm that opens up and a gun comes out of it and like last year you know we had advanced warfare <laughs> that was like oh it's kind of somewhat plausible near future and this is just like no fuck it it's like lasers and shooting shit underwater and flying around and doing all kinds of nutty shit. Um, so it's Days X. It's Days X, but in a first-person shooter format. Yeah, actually. That's, that that actually seems like a lot of... of um, that actually seems like a very good, uh, an apt uh, <laughs> a comparison. But it looks really cool. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm willing to give Call of Duty some latitude, especially this one, because I thought the Black Ops 2 was a really fun game. Um now, they said that they're not actually going to have the same branching campaign stuff that they had in Black Ops 2, which is a bit of a disappointment because that was the um, that was one of the big draws for me of that game. But it looks like they're setting it up. I mean, I've, I'm, I haven't torn into this horribly, but it looks like there's a, there's a co-op campaign. Like, they're trying to create this campaign in a way where you have, I think it's like a, there's a male protagonist, a female protagonist, and then you can play as either one of those, and your friends can jump in to play as the other ones. Um, I don't know. It seems like they're trying. It seems like they're trying to do something a little bit different. And at this point, I appreciate that with Call of Duty. Anytime they want to try anything, even remotely different. Yeah, sure. Uh, Can't make it the same game over and over again. Well, you know they have been for quite a while, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but it looks really good. I mean, I think that it, they do that thing in the trailer that I'm not really a big fan of, where they play. Uh, they play an, an old song over their explosions and stuff, and in this case, it's uh, that uh, the, that Rolling Stones song about I can see a red door, paint it black, paint it black. That's the one. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I don't know. Seems interesting. I'm kind of excited to play it. I mean, I thought Advanced Warfare was, I thought Advanced Warfare was pretty good. Did you end up playing Advanced Warfare, Kevin? Uh, yeah, I I have it on my. Uh, I have the Advanced Warfare Xbox One. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it makes, like, military noises. is like the power-on, power-off sounds and stuff. It's Weird. not just Kevin Spacey talking to you the entire time? No. <laughs> no. No. Oh, man. Just like yeah, Moon. Yeah. That would be awesome. Just Kevin Spacey talking to you. If, if I, oh my god, I would I would go out and buy one of those if they if it was an Xbox One. It came with a Connect, but they changed all of the vocal things so that you had to say Kevin Spacey, you know, instead of Xbox. Kevin Spacey, turn on. <laughs> it's like I'm on. And he'd be like Kevin Spacey, watch ESPN, and they'd be like, all right. And then he turns on ESPN. Kevin Spacey, Kevin Spacey, launch Netflix, and he's like, all right, cool. Um, there was well, that movie I, there where he's a robot and. He's uh, moon man. No, no, no. Yeah, that's 
True, oh. but there's also another one where he's a robot, and it's like Frank Langella. Oh, robot Langella. And... It's like Frank and Me or something. It's called. I forget. But... It's Robot and Frank, right? Is that? Yeah, uh, yeah, or something like that. Right. You know what okay. I'm talking about. Yeah. I never saw it. I heard a lot of good things about it. Just you know, I. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Too it's busy playing video like games. Having your own personal Kevin Spacey. I think we should all have our own personal Kevin Spacey. Is there? Can I, is this, who do I need to talk to in the government about getting my own? Like, can't we just take that dude and then just you know make a bunch of Kevin Spaceys and have him follow me around? You can pick your pick your flavor. It could be like, do you want Frank Underwood? Do you want Kaiser Soze? Do you want K Pax? Uh, you know, robot. Pick any of the number of different Kevin Spacey robots. You know, yeah, I'll take them all. Was he the Was he the voice of the bad grasshopper in a Bug's Life? could take that one too oh man i don't know that's a long <laughs> deep, time ago deep cuts me. deep kevin spacey cuts <laughs> we gotta get on this kevin you and i have to we have to uh, uh trademark spacey co right where it's like just little <laughs> kevin spacey tamagotchis that follow you around um well next up on the list uh let's see <laughs> Yeah, I love this where last week, you know how Valve uh, decided to put the you could pay for mods on for Skyrim on Steam. Um, they boy, they they fucked me on that story because it's like we recorded our podcast on Friday and it went up on Sunday and then like Monday they took it down. So I immediately just looked like a fool, like a fool. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, apparently after a huge outcry and a bunch of different like wailing and gnashing of teeth uh valve decided to basically take down um take down the the support for paid mods on the steam workshop and uh i'm having a hard time right now kind of figuring out exactly why like exactly what the 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 biggest what the community's huge problem what that was whether it was just the the just the philosophical concept of paying somebody for a game mod or if it had something to do with the because it was like a split it was like forty five percent to Valve and thirty percent to Bethesda and then only twenty five percent to the actual mod creator or if it was that or or oversight to make sure that the bad mods weren't coming through it's like what exactly was was everybody so pissed off about. I don't know. Were you pissed? I off? mean, I don't think people. I, I don't think people wanted to. You know, obviously, there's a big chunk of people that don't want to pay for mods, right? They just want mods to always be free, and they want it that it's like the open source kind of thing. They just want you know freedom to get stuff and not have to pay. So you know that's probably the largest chunk of chunk of it. And I think the other problem they had was how do you know who owns what? Mm -hmm. You know, somebody puts something up and they say, hey, I created this mod. And that's kind of like where they started with that phishing mod they keep talking about. But probably with anything, who owns the rights to any of that stuff? And so Valve would have to, you know, become litigators in a way to figure out if something that's up there is um, legitimately one guy's creation or another guy's creation. I think that's more than they wanted to put in you know into it in terms of effort yeah no i could i could see that yeah that would, would be kind of weird i mean i was it always i mean even when we were talking about it last week it seemed weird that bethesda would go along with this even in the first place i mean it seemed yeah. like it's it, and for my money i mean in listening to like I, I read a little bit of the uh gabe newell did an ama where he just jumped up his ass uh and then bethesda did a press release and valve did a press release and it seemed like it seemed like all three of them, like they they kind of came at this. Like I I think that they came at this with the best of intentions. That it wasn't originally like they were setting out to be like, ah, let's you know fleece a bunch of money off of this the mod community. I I mean I just don't get the impression. I mean I guess I'm a, a bit of a Steam fanboy, right? So or no, not a bit of. I have like 450 games on Steam, so I can't you know I can't sit here and tell you that I don't like Steam a whole lot. Um, but the, from all the stuff that they said, it sounded like they legitimately were trying to do this with the best of intentions and that they just didn't really – they kind of got blindsided by, you know, what, whether it's public concern or what you're talking about with, with the rights issues. They just kind of got right, right. C- kind of got hit by that in a way where they were like, well, should we try to fix this or should we just say fuck it? And that the answer was fuck it. Um, because in a, a lot of the – I was reading something where – Gabe Newell was basically saying that one of the mistakes that they thought that they made was that that it was in doing this with Skyrim, with a game that was 
already established for a long period of time that had a very established Mahdi community, right? Is that yes. rather than changing that, if they were to put out a new product and from the very beginning be like, well, if you want to copyright your mod for this game, you could totally do that. And that would probably be a better way to do it anyway, um, rather than, you know, Skyrim, which has been around. How, how old is Skyrim now? Was that 2012? Is that it? Three years old? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. End of 2012. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Game's got legs. Um, well, uh, there was also. I have. I'm sorry. I've run out of, of even crappy transition. Speaking of legs, <laughs> you know who yeah. else has legs? The guy in Just Cause Three. I can't remember the main protagonist's name. What is that guy's name? Did you? Ah, oh God. Um, I like to think of as Manny Calavera, and I know that's. I know that's not the guy from Just Cause Three. Totally don't know. That's. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Boom. Rico Rodriguez. Wait, uh, uh, known as Medici with Rico Rodriguez said as the protagonist. Is that the same guy from the previous one? Weird. I thought it was. I thought the guy had a, a different name. Uh, um, yep. Rico Rodriguez is the main character in Just Cause. In apparently, Just Cause Two and Just Cause Three. Uh, so they actually we had a like a teaser trailer before. Uh, that just had a bunch of like blowing up and another one of the stupid pop songs behind it. Uh, but this one is like actual gameplay footage, and you have have you haven't seen this one either, Kevin? You even kept keep up with your trailers this week? No, right? Yeah, I didn't. Sorry. Oh my god, I am. This is this like last year we didn't have a game that was as like bug nuts bananas as uh, Saints Row Four was the year before. This game looks like it. It is that game. Uh, like the trailer starts with him flying from just an impossibly a possibly high height in a wingsuit and then like grappling onto a plane and stealing the plane from a guy and then like driving it and then it's just and then it for like a minute the it, it's just explosions it's just various things exploding here's a building exploding here's some guys exploding here's a chopper exploding and then a bridge explodes and then this explodes it's just like <laughs> fucking a right um I mean, at the very end, they show that same, I, oh, I assume, what is this, the plane from that being, like, driven into an industrial complex and blowing up, and you could see him kind of just pop out with the wingsuit, just go, yeah, later, fuckers. Um, but, yeah, this is incredible. And, and it's weird. I think that I, I, you know, did you play any of the Just Cause games, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, I didn't play them to completion, but... Uh... Yes. It's like the skydiving in the beginning, right? And you're like flying down or something and you land on that island or all whatever. I think that was a Just Cause game. Um, you have a, but I, you said the parachute that you could pull out at any moment and like the grappling hook that you can grapple onto stuff with? Yeah, I think, yeah. it's. I played one and it, uh, it's vague in my head, but yeah. Okay. I think it's funny. It just kind of reminded me of a cheap Far Cry in a way, but I'm not sure why that is. I mean, I probably didn't give it enough of a shot or a chance. You know, it always reminded me of uh, Mercenaries, uh, the old Mercenaries mm. franchise. Uh, but it's funny because we also had a... The, I don't know if you saw last week the trailer that came out for Mad Max, which is from the same company. Yes, Avalanche Studios. That, yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, I know that they made Just Cause 2, but it kind of seems like... I mean, are both both Mad Max and Just Cause 3? Because Just Cause 3 is supposed to come out holiday this year, and if I'm not mistaken, Mad Max is supposed to come out this year as well. Um, seems like a weird... A weird thing where Avalanche Studios just kind of comes out and like you know pops to what seem like they're going to be kind of fairly high profile games in one year, kind of out of nowhere. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I have to you know, I have to look up and see if they what else they've what else they've done here. Um, but yeah, if, if you haven't watched it yet, let's see. Mad Max. Yep, uh, Just Cause Three, the last game. Ooh, a bunch of stuff. The last game before 2015, the last time they put out a game was in 2011 with the Renegade Ops, which was a... I fucking love that game. And uh, Just Cause 2 in 2010. So it's actually been... It's been kind of four years since they put something out. There's a couple of other games uh, on here. There's one on the iOS, and there's one on uh, Linux? Uh, wait, no, that's Mad Max. Rumble City is iOS, and The Hunter Primal was on Windows... Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think both those games look absolutely fantastic. Like uh, if Avalanche can really like stick a claim as being the company that does big, dumb, blowing up, crazy, good looking games, yeah, I'm down with it. Um, next up, we have 
I originally had, I, you know, before we started this, Kevin, I originally had this whole thing laid out as like a good news, bad news type of thing, right? So it's bouncing back and forth between stories, great stories and bad stories. And I don't know which one this was supposed to fall into originally. Uh, Ouya is looking, the Ouya is looking to sell themselves off uh, to pay off apparently some debt that's coming in. Um, I think that the Ouya is not going to be around for that much longer. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of crazy. I'm not sure who would want to buy it because at the end of the day, it's just another uh, Linux. I mean, uh, Android console, and uh, we've got an overflow of them right now. Really, when you think about it, mm-hmm. and um, it's dated as well. Apparently, they've got a lot of games. They've got more games than anybody does, but I don't know if those are games anybody really wants to play. Um, the one that's you know, the thing that I enjoyed about Dewey is the fact that it was open and, you know, you could put in all sorts of emulators and play a bunch of classic games on it with a halfway decent controller and everything. But your average uh, consumer isn't interested in doing that kind of stuff, you know. So, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. It's always been a weird thing. It was, you know, kind of niche and, uh, it's just, you know, I think it's critical mass. Nobody's going to, nobody wants to buy it in or whatever. Well, it's, I mean, you know, the fact that, uh, it just seems like if you want to sit in front of something with a with a game controller at this point, you'd be just way more likely to get just a straight up console. And if you want to play right. some Android games, you'd probably just play them on your phone, right? I mean, most of the games that were on the Ouya were designed to be played with a phone anyway, weren't they? I mean, I don't have one, so I don't you know I don't know. Um, well, yeah, I mean for the most part, but you know you can get an Amazon Fire TV now, you know, with a controller, and uh, you know I think it's more powerful than the Ouya. You've got that uh, NVIDIA um, Shield, Shield TV coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, they got that new one that's coming out that's uh, Android. I think Razer or something has something as well that's their own. And then, um, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's, there's a just whole a bunch lot of them. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, I, in the story that, that I was looking at for this, it did say that the, um, the best-selling game on the Ouya only moved 7,000 copies. And that the... Because um, they have this whole thing where you can what, you can download every game for free and then you can upgrade it to full. Uh, and that the, apparently the rate of trial to full conversion on the console is about 8%. And both of those... I mean, you know, that's just that's just a full-on nail in the coffin of this thing of like, you know, if, if nobody's buying anything on it, then of course they're not making any money. And if they're not making any money, then, you know... They're, they're done yep. um, right. so but I'll tell you what's not done and that is oh. the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, I thought it was done but not not now apparently the most prolific goddamn game franchise I've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> like one of these things comes out just like every you know last year what there was the first one came out in 2013 and then it, what there were two last year uh, d- was that how that went, or something like that? And then yeah, I think so. Yeah, they just announced that Five Nights at Freddy's Four is coming out uh, on uh, Halloween of this year. So that's you know a little bit more development time than I feel like the other ones got. Uh, and it's called Five Nights at Freddy's Four: The Final Chapter. So it's going to be a quadrilogy. I don't know. Um, I I still enjoy watching videos that other people make about the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's way more than I like actually playing it. Uh, but that's just me, and I'm contrary. So, uh, <laughs> I, I like the concept of Five Nights for Freddy's. I, I got you know the first one, and uh, you know I, I read some cheats online about exactly what to do in order to like to progress in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I I didn't. You know, I just kind of wanted to see what it was about, etc. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I can give somebody a tablet and be like, here, check this out. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. They play it for five minutes and put it down. Yeah. You know, I didn't get all into the the um, the mythology of it. Did you did you read that thing, though, about how they discovered the phone number in the game? And then uh, for or there were GPS coordinates, apparently, that pointed to a pizza shop on Google Maps. And then everybody started calling the, the pizza place. And the uh, the eventually the author of the game pleaded with people on a reddit post to stop calling the pizza place there's no phone number in the game it has nothing to do with anything oh but it's a little bit of a coincidence though that there was 
these GPS coordinates that led to um, this uh, um, pizza place on Google. And there's actually a post that came out like three weeks before the game was released or whatever. And it said something like... Um, the robots are going crazy inside the pizza place or something. They're killing people. Watch out <laughs> what's in there or something. So, so. I, I think I, I saw when I was looking for news stories this week, I think I saw something about that on uh, on Kotaku and that it was like it just happened to be a thing where people were so, so like crazy for it that they just put this thing together. <laughs> Right, exactly. Like, yeah, they just they wanted to see something so goddamn bad that they they managed to <laughs> shoehorn a bunch of numbers into a thing, and then they were like, "And there's a pizza place. It's like a mile from that." And then, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's incredible. I think that's great. Uh, <laughs> I I love it when things like that happen. I love it. I, I think that's. I feel like what. Um, what this whole, you know, the what? What do they call that? Uh, uh, God, what, what do they call that stuff? When you have the, uh, the AR, the not augmented reality, where they like the I love bees thing, where they have the big puzzles, right, that are hidden inside of like uh, uh, game stuff. God, what do they call that stuff? Uh, that an Easter egg? No, no, no. It, it'll be like a pre-release campaign where they have like a website that people then decode and they take this picture and they run it and they make it into a sound and the sound tells them that <laughs> yeah, to, to, right. you know like when they have I those things that i feel like it, i love the idea that the internet's gonna be so crazy and so trained that there's conspiracy everywhere that they're gonna take a thing where there is no conspiracy rip it apart and then piece together <laughs> something and just go that must be what it is <laughs> and like right. they're just like they're taking Ooh. whole web pages and putting them into making them into to mp3 files and they come out as gibberish and they go but but there's a code in here that if it blips every 14 <laughs> seconds and that must mean that it's the 14th parallel and so the new call of duty game is set in portugal and it's like yeah we did this like we did this by <laughs> by making these campaigns created these just broken people we're basically com created conspiracy theorists where there would have just been well-adjusted individuals by going i don't know it's just a picture of a bee but it might mean something <laughs> that's Crazy. that's incredible i love it um and last in the news but certainly not least uh, kevin i'd like to save a little something special for the end oh my god okay so do you do you do you watch uh sports at all kevin uh, occasionally, but rarely. Okay. Do you know there's a guy on ESPN called Colin Cowherd? Have you ever heard of this guy? No. Okay. No. Looks like uh, he runs a like a, a show. I don't know something. I don't know what sports are. He's he talks about sports. He's just a white guy with some glasses called The Herd with Colin Cowherd. And so apparently, uh, ESPN uh, at some like last weekend or something ESPN2 showed coverage of uh, a Heroes of the Storm match uh, like a tournament right um, which is a I assume you're familiar with that the MOBA that the Blizzard is putting out um, yeah they showed it on ESPN2 they had commentary uh, and uh, it was like a it was, they call it, it was called Heroes of the Dorm and it was just a bunch of like college dorms competing against who could be the best of it and so he watches this and he's like if there's one thing that will make me quit this job forever it's if they ever ask me to cover this stuff like it's a real sport what does it say oh. quote if i am ever forced to cover guys playing video games i will retire and then he goes on after a bunch of other stuff to say what else does he say i love this like somebody locked the basement door at mom's house and don't let him out I tagged out at Harry Potter. I tolerated Donkey Kong. I'll tell you, uh, that was the equivalent. Well, that was the equivalent of there of me putting a gun in my mouth and having to listen to that. Unbelievable. Uh, listen to how intense they are. These guys are totally into it. Just shitting all over this. Like it's just like ah, wow. fuck that. It's not sports. Bah, 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 bah. Um, yeah, and it's uh, it's funny. I think because I just started. I just started kind of getting into the whole MOBA thing. I'm just now kind of trying to dip my toe into the whole MOBA scene. Okay. And uh, cool. I like it. I think it's interesting. And I think the fact that, you know, this guy is like, I I mean, you know, don't don't they, isn't, I mean, chess is considered a sport, right? Like pool is considered a sport. We have bowling, big fat dudes uh, with, with butt cracks hanging down, 
bowling bowling is considered a sport i mean aren't we past the idea that it's like sports have to be some kind of crazy thing where you know some 25 year old with the body of a greek god is playing basketball like haven't we kind of got to a point where we can consider other stuff to be sports i don't know i I mean guys like that they'll just get phased out eventually by you know younger people that are more in tune to what's going on i at the end of the day money's money talks you know i mean once these things keep uh raising enough funds and um have a lot of sponsors and everything they'll all change their tunes then you know they'll just be like oh yeah we love it it's great you know it's just it's all about the money and the dollars for these people and right now it's just you know it's cool to knock the video games because you know nobody's gonna raise a big stink but eventually they will and you know those guys like that will either retire and move on or whatever oh, uh, you know i just want to send him to korea i want to send him to to the uh <laughs> the international where it's what last dota yeah yeah well, it was like a th- <laughs> what three or four million dollar pot or something like that for winning the international and just go like yeah you know talk to me about that i don't know it's just funny because we live in the year 2015 i know people who have never read a comic book who are shitting their pants with excitement over the avengers 2 and this guy is on right. tv using this sound clip of the the guy from revenge of the nerds screaming nerds and saying like go back to your basements you fucking pasty white nerds it's like dude we we run this shit now all right right you idiot right. like we 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 own this world and you guys like you know you just seem you seem like a total idiot when you go out there like like it's 1980 or something and you just be like ah, fucking computer people blah, 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 blah. yeah that guy completely doesn't get it yeah i mean you know even the people that aren't watching uh gaming you know they still play games yeah you know his audience is huge i mean full of people playing madden and uh, nba 2k and everything so you know it's just ridiculous to think that um he's going to knock that audience because he doesn't probably realize how much of how many of those people make up his audience. Yeah. I don't know. I, I get a warm, fuzzy feeling by going to the YouTube video of this. that's on YouTube and seeing that it's one of those ones where it's got, you know, like 90% down votes. And I, I love, I, I love going into, cause there's so much news, Kevin, to just depress the shit out of me. I love just <laughs> going to this guy's YouTube channel and watching a bunch of people who are fans of MOBAs just, tear his t- tear him a new asshole in youtube yeah. comments it's nice to feel like you're vindicated in youtube comments instead of just going like oh my god it's the most racist thing i've ever heard in my entire life <laughs> good <laughs> lord well with that that's the end of our news for this week so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break uh when we come back we are going to read your emails mail at rage is email address kevin are you ready to dispense the wisdom oh i am excited <laughs> you sound you sound like you just can't contain yourself. It's that it's that pants shitting excitement that I was just talking about. I'm just you're right there, man. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll be back momentarily. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show, everybody. It's time for the questions, but before we start, uh, I was talking with Kevin about the Rage Cast last week, which uh, uh, <laughs> by the time this goes up, we should have the archive. Everybody is funny. We were we were doing it. Everybody was just like, "Hey, are you going to record this and put it up later? You know, please record this." Like I was just going to be like, "Nah, I don't think so. I think I'm." <laughs> I'm just going to invite everybody to my house and clean for six hours and buy a bunch of equipment. And then, uh, yeah, fuck it. I'm not going to put on YouTube or anything. Come on. What is that? It's insane. <laughs> uh, but, no, the, 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 it was great. It was a great time. Uh, basically, let Jason host a show. You know, he was kind of like the oh. – uh, he was kind of the big host guy because I kind of do every other show. And I was like, yeah, we'll totally do this. You're in charge. Um, but the, the weirdest thing, Kevin, was the next day I woke up. And uh, fortunately, like three or four, like every couch in my entire place was had a person on at the end of the night. And, and then there was like one guy throwing up after that, I think, somewhere. <laughs> at one certain point, I was just like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to bed. Uh, but the next morning I woke up and I was like, I was cleaning up and I found, <laughs> I found this Domino's pizza box on my counter, right? And I, I like, it, okay. I was hung, I was so goddamn hungover and I looked at it and I was like, I haven't had Domino's in like a month. And when I did, it was terrible. And I'm pretty sure And then it's like hazy memory bubbled up of this guy that was at my house. And I was just like, at the end of the night, I was just like, I mean, I was so far gone. Like, I don't even remember half of what happened. 
Um, and at some point, I think I remember this guy. Like, I walked through my kitchen, and he was in my kitchen eating this like month old shitty pizza out of this Tacos <laughs> box. And I think I was like, "Hey, man, you shouldn't do that." And he's like, "I'll do what I want." And I was like, "All right, you throw up wherever you want. I don't care." Wow. <laughs> uh, like, I kind of want to get. A, like, I don't know if that guy's my friend on Facebook. I think I remember who it was. And I kind of want to just message him, be like, "Hey, are, are you alive?" Because. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure that one of those pizzas was like had like Alfredo sauce that was like butter based. It was like a month old butter or something. <laughs> and like, yeah, I'm like, what the fuck, bro? How are you do-? like? Oh god. Um. Anyway, so now that you guys <laughs> should make everybody's week better, right? At least I didn't eat Jeff's month old butter pizza. Uh, <laughs> um. It's time for the questions. Mail at RageSelect.com is the email address, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of press people a little bit harder than normal this week because we're you know I usually like to pick out ten different questions, and this week like um, I didn't have that many to choose from. So send in your questions. You know we'll answer whatever. We'll answer whatever. But our first question comes in from B Hammer. Somebody. This is a guy who emails us a lot. He says, "Hello, Jeff and Kevin. I hope your life is going well, and your faith in Dongocles is as unbreakable as the mighty Dong Shaft." Okay. One of my favorite shows, Justified, has uh, come to an end. After six years of consistently entertaining characters and wonderful dialogue, the show, based on uh, the Elmore lettered short story, is over forever. The ending was pretty surprising and kind of perfect, but that got me thinking about the series in general. And I'm reminded that uh, at the end of the pilot episode, Walter Goggins' character, uh, Boyd Crowder, was supposed to die. Of course, Boyd survived and became one of TV's best bad guys. Hey, spoiler, man. I haven't watched that show yet. Uh, I know this was supposed to happen in Breaking Bad as well. I heard somewhere that Aaron Paul's character was supposed to die at the end of the first season, but he survived, bitch. So my question, uh, if these shows had killed off these two characters like they were intending to, would the shows be better or worse without them? Thanks for reading my question. May the jizz be with you, B-Hammer 100. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's uh, – do you, do, you do you watch Justified? Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't really speak to yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, if it didn't have Boyd Crowder, it wouldn't have been as good of a show, right? I mean, they probably would have put somebody else in there, and it would have been, you know, more serialized or whatever. But I don't know. I mean, it, it was all right. I mean, I, you know, it's it's hard to sit there and say it wouldn't have been as good because you have no idea what it would it have been without that. Right. You know, would there have been if you wouldn't have Aaron Paul and Breaking Bad. You don't really know if it would have been you know, better or worse. It was great that he was in it, but, you know, how can you... I can't comment on something where the person's, you know... Right, that, yeah. Something that doesn't exist. Right, right, a, a totally, totally hypothetical situation. I mean, I the, the only reason, as I started thinking about it, and I started thinking that... Um, I think that... Like, I can kind of make an argument... Say, again, I can't speak for Justify, but I can kind of make an argument that if they had have spent the whole first season of Breaking Bad with with Jesse, and then he died at the end, it might have upped the stakes of the show a little bit more because they were even they were pretty good about putting people in peril and in jeopardy, but you could kind of you could kind of be assured that like, you know, they weren't gonna kill Walter Jesse. I mean, they they put him in peril well, yeah. a whole bunch of times, and and I, I I'll definitely admit that at the, in the moment when you're watching the show, every time it was just like, oh no, is this? Oh god, are they gonna kill? But then that's why I mean I've talked. Well, before. they could have killed they they could have killed they could have killed Jesse. You know, I mean, you pretty much were sure they weren't gonna kill Walter White, right? But you were never quite sure if the gig was up for. For him, for Jesse, because I mean, you know, he's constantly getting high and flipping sides, and you know, I mean, Walter God, could have killed the, him him at any point. Wouldn't that have? God, wouldn't that have been a weird show if it had been like season one, Jesse gets killed at the end of like season three, Walter White gets killed, and then it's like the the Gus <laughs> Fring and uh, Mike Ermentrout <laughs> story for a season, and then like. He gets killed off by, and then it's like the last, the Skyler last. Skyler goes on a rampage. Right, yeah. Then it's like <laughs> Skyler White and the and the Nazis from season five, like the white supremacists <laughs> and Skyler White show, and everybody's just like, "What the fuck is going on in this goddamn TV show?" <laughs> uh, but no, uh, what I was thinking actually was that um, I think that that's one of the great things. I've said this before. I think it's one of the great things about Game of Thrones is that Game of Thrones. You just don't know who's going to die, right? Because they've shown yep. that that nobody 
nobody's sacred, right? From the from the first episode or for the first season onward, that yeah, we'll we'll fucking we'll just kill anybody. We don't give a shit. We'll kill whoever, and they'll stay dead. Like they're not even going to come back to life or kind of crazy shit. Um, and I I think that that's the reason that, that show is so uh, uh, compelling is because. Yeah, there's a real feeling of danger to it, as opposed to you know you can watch Breaking Bad and be fairly sure that that you know that they're not going to kill like even if they if they are going to kill Walter White, it's not going to happen in like season four or uh, 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 episode four of season three, right? It's not going to be like the, the halfway through before the mid season break they're going to kill off the main character. Whereas in Game of Thrones, Jesus man, I don't know what's going to happen next week. You know, I, I think the only this? person. The only person that's a safe bet is Daenerys, and everybody else is. Yeah, you're totally right. Anybody at any time can get wiped out. It it does not matter, you know. So uh, that's totally what makes it interesting. It totally makes it, uh, you know, because eventually they will kill some of those people off. I mean, you can count on it. So uh, yeah, I agree. But I don't know. I mean, I get what that guy is asking, I, but you know. It's, speculating like that what's the point at the end of the day it it is what it is it happened so you know time yeah. to move on yeah it's hard to it's hard to yeah it's hard to speculate i don't know um <clears throat> well our next question here comes in from henry henry says hey guys uh first thanks so much for all the awesome content that you guys produce every day you're welcome um on to the question. Recently, I had to read Fahrenheit 451 for school. If you are unfamiliar, it's about the consequences of a cultural obsession with electronic entertainment and ever-shortening attention spans and, to a lesser extent, censorship. As a Class A nerd and gamer, it was a little terrifying, but I endured without sticking my head in the sand. And I have to say, it's a frightening concept that the government may one day use our obsessions to control us. What are your opinions about this, if any? If you agree with the novel, how do we fix it? May Volva Fire Crotch never find your dwelling, Henry. P.S. Remember how Bola was going to kill us all like three months ago? That was interesting. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, come on, man. I think Henry. I I don't you know I don't I don't mean to be a jerk about this or anything, but like I lived in Texas and it was hard for me to even drum up enough. Uh, like you know, once you once you go to the Wikipedia page for Ebola and read how Ebola is transmitted, you're just like, okay, well, I won't suck on anybody's bloody anus, and I'll probably will be able to get through this Ebola crisis without any real serious, uh, you know, real serious problems. Um, it's been a long time since I've read Fahrenheit 451, Kevin. I don't know if I really remember the the plot of it, but I I found this question interesting because it, it posed. Because of the way that he poses this question of, like, what if we were being controlled by our very desires? And I read that, and I was like, we are. It's, <laughs> like, every time you go to Facebook or you look at, like, I look up a microphone. I'll, I'll look up the price of a microphone on Amazon, and then, like, every ad. Every ad for the next six yes. months is trying to get me to buy yes. that microphone. And I'm just like, uh, even if I've already purchased it, even if I already own it. And, um, yeah, I think that it's... I, I think that shit's already happening in a really huge way. Um, right. We volunteer so much information that it's not difficult. I mean, especially with Facebook. God, especially with Facebook. It's just not really difficult to try to get people to, you know, to target advertise towards people. And that, by and large, I feel like we've generally just kind of think that it's fine. I mean... But, but it's also it's also like totally stupid too mm. like you know like it has no there's nobody behind it and i think that uh they can make these things as smart as they want to but they can't read your mind like you know i bought my friend a baby shower gift because i got invited to a baby shower right, right. i mean it's weird because it's normally women but this dude i know invited guys and he because he was going to be there so I bought, like, I can't even remember what, a high chair or something, right? So then whenever I'm on, like, websites, it's, like, trying to sell me all this baby stuff. And I'm like, I don't need any more baby stuff. It's like you got... I don't need baby stuff. I don't, I don't have a baby, you know? It, it doesn't know that, though. It thinks I have a kid. So it's it's stupid. It's, it, like, it, you, these algorithms are dumb. You've been... You can count on one thing. The machines of the future are going to be stupid. <laughs> you've, you've been marked. You've been marked as a parent. It's like they've, they've right. got you the database. Now you're going to be getting, like, letters from Huggies and shit. Like, here's a bunch of coupons for diapers. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I don't need any of these. Like, here's a here's a, a you know a free bottle from 
whatever. Uh, that's yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I that's that's one of the things that I find uh, really interesting. Um, it's funny. I actually go to this. I go to uh, there's a store near my house that I go to all the time that has one of these dumb like loyalty cards uh, where if you right. sign up and you let them track all your all of your sales, you get like an additional you know X percent off of certain things. And I just sure. I just won't do it. I'm just like yeah, fuck it. I don't want to do that. And they they badger me about it every time I'm in there. But for the most part, I mean, as near as I can tell, as long as it doesn't as long as it doesn't inconvenience people in any way, shape, or form, everybody's more than happy to to let the let this shit go on and uh, don't really care one way or the other. I mean, I know that I I go on my I've I you know uh, last year for a while there I was trying to talk to people about like food right and cheese uh, that was my my big thing was trying to it's just kevin i swear to god if you want to uh, suggest to a human being what next time that you're out that they stop eating cheese like they they'll, they'll almost come at you <laughs> like i i did this it was it was weird because it started out as kind of just like this thing that i was curious about and then it kind of turned into a weird social experiment where i would you know people would be out there like that guy yeah jeff like he doesn't he doesn't like cheese and i'd be like well <laughs> It's not that I don't like cheese. It's just what I'm suggesting is why don't you just try not eating cheese for a little while? And I swear to God, it's like they, they, this like caveman blood rage descends upon them. <laughs> it's like they're, they, they start like looking around for sharp implements with which to stab you. Like, you, like they just found out you were a fucking Terminator or something. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> Stop eating cheese. What, are you fucking communist? Wait, get the fuck out of here. Like, um, and, and there's some stuff like that that I feel actually, you know, it's that the, the, the brainwashing. They know right. exactly what you want. You want more cheese on your fucking burger, right? So they make like the right. quintuple cheeseburger, even though that shit's it's just straight up killing you. It's murdering you uh, just one day at a time. And it doesn't matter because they know, you know, you want some cheese. Uh, yeah. You know, 60 Minutes had a whole thing and report where they were talking about how, um, and, and where I get more, like, because I don't, I never really cared too much if stores and things had this information because their algorithms are dumb and they really don't know what I want. And, you know, at the end of the day, they're just trying to entice me to buy more stuff that mm -hmm. I may or may not need. But then they were saying that, like, companies that you might want to go get a job at are getting your surfing history and your mail order history and where you've traveled to. And all of this other stuff that you think is just right, you know, private. And yet, you know, now companies are able to purchase this information freely. There's no laws restricting it. And these like secretive companies collect all this information and, um, you know, they sell it to companies that you're trying to get a job at. And so um, not that, you know, I necessarily go to something that's uh, dubious or whatever, but you know, it, who knows, you know, it, what, what, I can't see it. So I have no idea what's on it. I don't have any rights to see it. There's no, it's not like your credit report. You can't look at it and who knows what's on there. You know, if my crazy brother came over and used my computer to do something ridiculous and they said that that was linked to me, I'm going to have a hell of a time trying to get a job in the future because that information is being sold, or, or I you mean, know? Yeah, so yeah, not. I mean, not to get like I what the uh, fuck ten, fifteen years ago. God, it has been that long. Um, I mean, the thing is that this has been going on for a long time, and you actually just said the magic words. I mean, I had a I had a r roommate who was an accountant, and she was trying to get a job, and they ran her credit score. And back, it, right. you know, when she was a teenager, her asinine bitch roommate had. T stolen her credit card, bought a bunch of shit before she could catch her, and fucking ruined her credit. And right, she'd been trying to get one of the three companies to take these charges off of her credit report for like five, ten years of just writing them letters and trying to get this stuff done. And they were just like, "Nope, we're not going to do it." And so, the, you know that that was years ago. That was before you know people could get your your history. They could get a credit report. They could make an evaluation about you just based on your credit report. I think all that stuff is right. bullshit, but the problem is that yeah. other people, for the most part, at least in my life, most people 
if you like, if you tell somebody, if somebody's like, you know, oh well, can I? Like, hey, I tried to friend you on Facebook, I couldn't find you, and you're just like, oh, I'm not on Facebook. Like, why? And you're like, well, I don't, I don't want people to be monitoring like what I do and and my personal information because I know that Facebook takes that information and sells them. If you say that to somebody, you sound like a crazy person to them, right? They look at you <laughs> like you're some kind of like tinfoil living under a bridge. If you're just like, well, no, I don't, you know, I don't want to be recorded or. I, hell, man, I went to GameStop the other day, and the guy was just like, what's your phone number? And I'm like, I'm not giving you my phone number. And he's like, you're in here all the time buying stuff. Don't you want the points of the rewards? And I'm just like, no. And he's like, oh, come on. It's a real hard sell. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck you. I just I don't want to do that. But then at this point, I feel like I'm the odd man out because everybody is so comfortable with this stuff that it just doesn't, it doesn't really tend to matter anymore. Um so I guess Henry, what I mean, I, you just get, you just give him a fake, just give him a fake phone number. You know, I mean, I you know, it's people. You know, if you're gathering my information from Facebook, you're just you're just gathering anarchy. There, you know, there's really nothing in there that's realistically um, has anything to do with me as a real person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's Facebook for most people is some sort of fantasy zone where you're trying to pretend that you're something else other than what you really are, and so. I don't really think it's that helpful for marketing. I mean, maybe a little bit, but you know, there's a few people out there that'll be like, "I just bought a new car," and that somehow sell you floor mats or something for your car. But I think for the most part, most people on Facebook are just completely being, you know, uh, they're, they're either self-promoting something, you know, selling something um, about themselves or something they're involved in, or they're just trying to front and and pretend that they're somebody that they're not. I really want a marketing, except for like grandparents or something. I really want a marketing agency to try to to try to start sending me like direct targeted marketing after they've listened to all of the podcasts on my website, watched yeah. all the videos. <laughs> and now, no, we know this guy. We know you. We know exactly what you're all about. It's about gyms and Lone Star. We're going to send you coupons for cigarettes and pork chops, essentially. And be like, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's that's Henry. The answer to your question is that shit's already going on and nobody cares, and it doesn't really t- seem to really matter all that much anyway. Uh, next up, Sam says, "Greetings from New Zealand, Jeff and Kevin. You'll be uh, pleased to hear wow. that the praises of the dong have reached our shores. I've loved listening to you guys in one form or another over the past few years. Forgive me for waiting so long to make contact." Uh, after hearing Jeff talk about Dune, I thought I'd give it a read. It was totally badass, but I could definitely see why it's hard to make it to a good movie. But why haven't they made it into a sweet game recently? Uh, it seems like the perfect IP to translate into the medium. A quick wiki survey indicates they haven't made a shot at it in like 14 years. What the fuck is going on? Who has the rights to this? Uh, why don't they like making money? <laughs> Uh, they could make it into a cool Skyrim-esque game where you cruise around an open world like Arrakis, uh, riding worms and shit. There could be a sweet Prince of Persia type mechanic where prescience can be used as a sort of time travel device to look into the future, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or it can make a good RTS with the Fremen rampaging across the galaxy, which I think they tried, uh, but the company went insolvent before they finished. Actually, we'll tell you a story about that in a minute. Uh, what kind of Dune game would you most like to see, and which company should attempt to dredge up the rights and make it? And you can't say a Dark Souls type game where you do nothing but fight impossibly hard worms the whole time. Um, let's see. P.S. If you, uh, bu- 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 oh, okay. This guy says he's coming to town and he would like to meet up for some beers. And that's from Sam. All right, Kevin. Do you do do you, do you Dune? Have you do have you Dune? Are you a Dune? Do you fan of the franchise? I mean, I've seen the movie and I played the video games, but I didn't. Uh, you know. Read the books. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't, I mean, you know, when he says, like, an RTS, right? Dune 2 was, yeah. like, the original, right? That was before, it was, uh, was it was it Westwood back then that made that? Or what, did yeah, they just so, yeah. take over the franchise when it came to uh, uh, that Dune 2000? No, I think point? it was West. I think it was, I think it was Westwood at that point. I mean, that was the first Command and Conquer engine game, you know? Mm-hmm. It was, th- it was basically rough. the same... <laughs> Yeah, but it was basically the same. It had three races, you know, uh, fighting. I played, I played that a lot. I mean, it was, you know, the granddaddy of RTS at that point. I mean, it was, it was new. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you know, it, and the the whole design was. I mean, people want to talk about Herzog Zwei and things like that, but um, real realistically, that Dune game was the that was the thing. Yeah, so nineteen ninety two, nineteen ninety two. Wow. Wow, that was yeah. the year that I yeah. entered high school. <laughs> so it was on the Amiga, so that was uh, 
That's how old it was. Yeah, and then there was uh, what there was the there was one before that too, though, right? Just straight up Dune that was there like was a, a there was a Dune, but I think that was like a RPG or something. I don't quite remember. It wasn't an RTS, as far as I recall. Yep, and then there was one. Then they tried to kind of bring it back uh, with uh, what, like Dune two thousand or something like that. Yeah, uh, right. That was kind. Oh, uh, it was not not really super great. Um, I don't know. No, and then they got to pay the license for it too. Like, why bother? You know. Yeah, there is that as well. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I honestly feel like the reason that you haven't seen a game like that is because it's. I mean, like technically speaking. Uh, I feel like that would, I mean, you would probably, like, the t- at the time, you know, 1992 when Dude 2 came out, you would have seen that was a time when you could get weird, obscure licenses and make a game without sinking a, a shit ton of money into it. But if they were to make a, a Dune game, I just don't think that Dune as a property is hot enough for them to to bother to spend the money on the license. Uh, that it would just come out as some kind of. I mean, if the, it would be different if there was some kind of like tie-in movie, but it'd be the same thing as like I think that uh, um, uh, the, the William Gibson Neuromancer books, right, would probably make for a really great video game. You've got all this kind of action and this weird, you know, cyberpunk sci-fi, and you've got the the you know the their cyberspace equivalent and stuff like that. I mean, it, it's a perfect a perfect place to set a game. But I mean, hell, last week we were talking about. I, I was talking with John about what pirates and the Old West are both perfect genres to set a video game in. They're violent. They've got a lot of different things that you can do, and we see very little of that because I, I don't know why, honestly. I mean, I think it's just because people are looking to maximize, I mean, at least the big studios. I know, I mean, at this point, it's all just sequels, right? I mean, what was the last new IP that a big studio released? Shadow of Mordor, but even that was like a game tie-in. Yeah, I just I don't think that Dune has enough heat behind it, even though it's it's definitely a very interesting universe that has a lot of potential for like really creative ideas and and uh, you know really interesting gameplay. But we live in a world where safe bets are the bets that uh, that that go through. So here's a here here's a little thing I just found. It says there's been five published games in the Dune franchise. Dune by Cryo, Dune 2 by Westwood, uh, Dune 2000 Westwood, Emperor Battle for Dune, Westwood, Ooh. Frank Herbert's Dune by Cryo, and then Dune Generations by Cryo. Are those and basically other... they say... What's up? Oh, no, I was just asking, are those other two, the Cryo ones, are those uh, tie-ins to the, to the uh, sci-fi show? Um, it doesn't say. It just says the one was self-published, the, the Frank Herbert's Dune, and then the other one was canceled. It says, it says Emperor Battle for Dune and Frank Herbert's Dune were both published in 2001, so at that point both EA and Cryo both possessed some rights to produce video games under the franchise. Cryo went bankrupt shortly after, at least in part to poor sales of Frank Herbert's Dune, going to your point that it's not big enough, Yeah, and to, had to cancel Dune Generations. Cryo was mostly absorbed by Dreamcatcher Interactive, but a few years later, Microid seemed to have acquired the complete rights to Cryo's intellectual property. However, from digging around the internet, it appears that EA's rights lapsed shortly after publishing Emperor Battle for Dune, and that Cryo didn't hold the rights either at that time. Instead, Sci-Fi had acquired bundled TV and video game rights when they produced the Dune miniseries, and Sci-Fi contracted Cryo to build the game. Sci-Fi held some portion of those rights till at least 2003, mm-hmm. since they produced another miniseries as a sequel, which was released that year. After that, it appears that Paramount optioned the rights to produce a new Dune film in 2007, but they let the option lapse in 2011 after failing to secure the necessary funding, and it's all reverted now back to Herbert Limited Partnership, which prefers to license it all as a bundle. TV, film, and video game. Ugh, so. gross. I actually, I've just been means looking up the... Make it really hard to make it into a game. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Emperor Battle for Dune was basically uh, another RTS, and then Frank Herbert's yeah. Dune was connected directly to the... To the t- I'm actually looking at some of the screenshots. This looks like a really shitty game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I actually played this, though. Um, like, goddamn. It's yeah, but honestly, it's just it's not. I mean, it, it, I'm sure that you know, there's people out there. There's a hundred different people who could say, like, what about this sci-fi franchise that I really like? I mean, I, I think that you just start to run into this problem where it, it's like, a lot of times your most beloved uh, sci-fi franchise that you care a lot about just doesn't have enough. 
it doesn't have enough of a, an audience to make it into a game. Uh, John, John Scalzi's uh, Old Man's War, right, is about, you know, old people get when, – when people get old, they go up into space and they give them new, new space action space bodies that are all, you know, made to kill aliens and they send them out into this – the universe where it's just like bitter combat that would make a great franchise. There's like a yeah. shit ton of different sci-fi that would probably make for William Shatner's Tech War. There we go. That's the franchise that we need to get on right now. I bet there. I bet there's been a Tech War game, um, or uh, um, probably fucking Elron. Uh, anyway, anyway, our next question comes in from Swedish Latino. Uh, who set this question in a couple times, so I figured, Kevin, we should, we should give him some advice. Were you, were you going to say Battlefield Earth? Is that what you are doing? Yes, Battlefield Earth. No, dude. <laughs> was there a movie tie-in Battlefield Earth video game? Because I want to know what a shitty licensed game for a shitty movie looks like. There were a lot of games back then that were, um, you, you know, value time type games or whatever that were just value soft. Mm -hmm. uh, it's possible. That was back in the casual days when... They were selling nine million copies of Deer Hunter every week. Ugh. So maybe. Uh, that's that's incredible. <laughs> anyway, Swedish Latino asks, uh, Hello, Jeff and Kevin. Uh, I'm in a hard part of my life where I'm done with the required school time in Sweden. Now I don't know what to do. So my question is this. In the words of Tyler Durden, what now? May your dicks always find a hole to fill. Swedish Latino. I This is so, like, Swedish Latino, I don't know... I don't. Uh, he sent this question a few times. I feel like he really wants an answer, Kevin. But I just don't know. Like, there's not a lot of information here. Like, what are you? What are you good at, Swedish Latino? Are you a, you know, an artist or like a male dancer or I mean, are you? <laughs> do you like to to look at fish or eat birds or I mean, you know, I'd say do what you're interested in. I suppose. I mean. I I don't know. I'm trying to think of a, a an answer to such a, a vague question. Um, investment banker. Just become an investment banker so you can have millions of dollars. That's right. That you can give to Jeff and myself. That's right. To uh, and we'll continue to make a lot of content for you to enjoy mm -hmm. and buy new equipment and stuff with the money that you give us with your own private empire. Absolutely. So yes, go watch the Wolf of Wall Street and then just do that because. Right. That all seemed to work out fine at the end, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> there was some divorce and some Lamborghini smashing, but other than that, I mean, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, Swedish Latino, you're going to have to give me more. Uh, I'd say at this point, you know, just uh, all I could really give you are the dumb platitudes that everybody says, right? Do what makes you happy. Figure out what you want to do with your life. Like, are you into money or are you into, like, you know, not wanting to shoot yourself in the face or into money and shooting other people in the face you could become like a professional you know assassin or i don't i don't i don't know i don't know uh, ufc fighter yeah there you go Just go with that that's a good one um all right this next one comes in from joe joe says hello rage select i wanted to know how you feel about video games as a commercial property and in terms of its critical reception. As a student at a well-renowned game design university, I wanted to share my learning experience briefly. When it comes to what my teachers in these kinds of classes discuss, it is the idea of fulfilling the wishes of a client or art director, as well as designing a game that will sell. I listen to many critics of gaming, professional and not, and whenever I hear lamentations of what sells uh, as being the norm, I have to wonder if enough gamers and journalists understand the realities and challenges of making a game. Uh, you seem well aware of the financial burdens developers face, as do other in-the-know game enthusiasts. Personally, I'm happy with plenty of AAA titles like Grand Theft Auto, Last of Us, Wolfenstein, uh, Shadow of Mordor, etc. Yet I can totally see the bullshit of Evolve's DLC model, Ubisoft's spotty PC and console optimization, and reused game design, and EA shoving multiplayer in games that don't need it. Um, how do you think games can continue to grow as an art form but also survive as a business entity without fucking with consumers and eroding trust? Love the site, Joe. It's kind of all over the place here, Joe. I don't know, Kevin. You've been at this for longer than I have. What do you think? <laughs> How do they go about uh, continuing to improve? I mean, historically we've seen what goes on they just keep making games bigger and better and bigger and better and every so often you get some unique uh um 
technology or game engine that sort of shake things up. We're looking at 3D now. You know, the the headsets is going to be possibly something. We had motion control last generation. You know, some stuff sticks, some stuff doesn't. Um, I don't think they're in any danger of gaming somehow going away. It's a huge business, and it's going to continue to get better and better. It's just, you know, it... it on one hand, games get more expensive, like they say, but on the other hand, the tools continue to get better and better to make that process a lot easier. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it really kind of depends on what angle you're coming in and looking at it. If you're the guys from, um, you, you know, making like the game engine, uh, like Valve or it or something, you know, you've got a bigger job because you've got to, you know, adapt your source engine or whatever to the game. But a lot of developers are just purchasing, or these days, I think, you know, you can get some of these game engines for free, and um, just, you know, building their games around that tool, and I'm not saying it's cheap, you know, art costs money, and, you know, you've got to get some programmers to come up with a game design that's going to work, but, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if you're making a first-person shooter, it's, well, the mechanics are there at this point, so you're just, you know, you're coming up with new weapons and things to do, and, and... I don't know. I'm not saying it's cheap, but I'm not saying it's like this. The game companies just want to justify the, the fact that they're charging you $60 a game uh, so that every so often they can have a Grand Theft Auto sell like a billion dollars in, in uh, uh, rev- you know, profit and revenue for them so they can continue to make games. Um, but ultimately, you know, if you look around at a lot of what the independent developers are doing... Um, there's a lot of people out there, one or two man teams, making some pretty compelling games. And uh, sometimes, you know, they launch off into bigger and better things. But I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. But ultimately, I, I'm not worried about the gaming industry or anything collapsing or nothing like that. I think we're we're um, we're, we're probably going to see more and more dollars invested in it as it becomes um, a greater and greater uh, piece of our entertainment uh, as um, it continues to erode away other things that people are becoming less and less interested in you know like television shows with 20 minutes worth of commercials in them and that sort of stuff yeah 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 i mean i i personally i mean and think about this um i personally think that that uh, or, or or my hope my my fervent hope the thing that has uh, that I, i've kind of been hoping and this goes back to the reasoning why i talk about like don't 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 pre-order your games and don't buy season passes until you know right. what's in them and stuff like this is that um, I'm hoping that we get like the. I feel like some of the some of the cynicism that we see when we look at video games comes directly from the fact that game companies, uh, for a long time, and as they move forward, it seems like it's a thing that we're seeing more and more often are just taking like the super easiest path, right? They're like, right. okay, release the game. There's. And like you know, you're four days into into whatever the new game is, right? You're four days into design docs of the next Call of Duty game, and some guy comes in to say, "Okay, now you need to remember that you're going to need six multiplayer maps and two pieces of DLC content and four different character skins that we can sell. Uh, you, we're going to need two for pre-order at GameStop. We're going to need two for Target. We're going to need two for Walmart." Um, and I feel that that a lot of times that shit and and taking this like real easy route, we're just going to make the exact same thing over and over again and change it up slightly, um, is is a lot of times that that I feel like is the is the enemy of of real creativity, right? Like I understand that that EA can't they can't I mean they can't go out on a you know a, a three hundred million dollar limb right with some crazy IP that some dude comes to them and is like, I want to make the most expensive Game of Thrones game ever. And I don't know, maybe it'll be good, right? <laughs> like they can't, they just can't do that. On the other hand, I feel that we've even seen with like the, uh, I mean, you know, they're bringing it back now, but like with the the plastic controllers, you know, with Guitar Hero and Rock Band, we saw them right. like just do the same thing over and over again and more so with Guitar Hero than with Rock Band, but we saw the market then get to a point where it was just like, yeah, I just don't fucking care about that anymore because people still want new stuff. You can only rehash yeah. this shit for so long before everybody's just like, yeah, I don't care. I don't. That's not, like, I don't give a shit anymore. Um, of course, I say that yeah. as, as Call of Duty is still the number one selling you know, game every year, <laughs> which, yeah, but I mean, Guitar Hero, you know, it came out that, you know, it, it rewarded that unique, that unique approach. I mean, it wasn't a unique game because we had games like it before, but sometimes when you take a lot of ideas and put them together in a way that 
um, makes it compelling for people to play it versus, you know, uh, maybe more of a half-baked version of it previously. Um, you know, that works for companies and they end up making billions of dollars on it and that sort of thing. I mean, look at how many MMO RPGs came out in the past 10 years that only a very, very small handful have managed to survive. Right. And there's probably been billions of dollars spent and wasted making um, terrible games. Just games that were terrible, that nobody was ever going to buy, that um, cash just got flushed down the drain in order to create. There seems to be an unlimited amount of investor dollars for um, video games. And every time, you know... One company folds, there's all these other new studios and companies that rise up and take their place. And I used to be worried about these kinds of things. The only thing that's ever really come to pass that can be a problem is the fact that we used to have a lot more hardware manufacturers. We used to have a lot more game systems from a lot of different companies. And a lot of those game systems were trying to do unique and different things, which sort of drove the market in really cool ways and now you know we we basically have three companies and um they they almost follow the same the same i mean we can't nintendo doesn't but sony and microsoft basically follow the same hardware specs so um you know the danger there is sony or microsoft bowing out and um leaving us with only two one being nintendo who doesn't give a fuck you know right and, you know, who knows what their next machine's going to do. And then Sony can just kick back and charge whatever they want and do whatever they want. I mean, you know, uh, what did they charge originally for the PlayStation 3? Like $600 or something when it first came out, something. et cetera? Yeah, you, th- you think I'd yeah. remember because I scrimped up the money to buy one of those, like, you know, day one PS3s. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> you know, when the egos get out of control with the hardware manufacturers, you, you, you end up, as consumers, paying the price. So... That's the one thing that's dangerous, but I think from software development and game development, I don't think we're in any, I don't think we're in any danger. I, I mean, I think that you just, I think that you're already seeing, you already see the market like kind of shrug, right? When, uh, when you have a game that comes, I mean, like, I, here's the thing. The, there was last year, it's like every time I turned around, there was something new about Evolve coming out. Evolve came out and I don't really know anybody that plays Evolve. I mean, I know maybe like one right. guy on Facebook who plays it from time to time, but I feel like you're really gonna you're really gonna know you're really gonna know the stuff that sticks because you can only you know it's like you can only like is anybody is anybody out there who's just like yeah I love Assassin's Creed Unity it was my favorite of the entire franchise like I you know that game came out and it kind of came and it went and and it was I feel like that was a game that was a game to me that felt like it was designed very much by committee for. The, to have a lot of things in it, right? Like it had these design hooks in it for uh, these microtransactions and uh, uh, booster packs and stuff that you could buy online, and that it just ended up not really working. Um, and I feel that as long as the as long as the video game playing people of the public don't reward just the the you know that that for at least from what I can see, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of wandering around here but from what i can see it seems like even the most just gee whiz i'll buy anything that has an explosion in the in the uh the commercial gamer will get sick of something after a while right that they'll get sick of the exact same game over and over and over again and even they will just stop buying it and that is essentially your your safety valve to keep them from just selling us crap over and over again and in the meantime you know there's a like Dude, I'll tell you what the 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 indie channel over on Steam that shit's like vicious now. There's like four yeah. new indie games every day. You've got to you've got to have you've got to have some real serious like interesting, fascinating chutzpah to get any play over there. Like you can't just be putting out a 16 bit shooting game over there and nobody will right. care. There's right. already a billion of those. Like Broforce did that. Broforce did that to the point where like nobody else needs to do it anymore. So it's going to take right. weird stuff like Hotline Miami or or next week that uh uh that 90s not a hero action game from Devolver Digital is coming out. I'm like really super psyched about that. Um so I feel like you're seeing a lot more experimentation in the indie channel and that some of that stuff then can get trickled back up into the um 
into the big AAA games, but that you're never just going to see dull blandness take over fully. And and with Kickstarter and right. stuff like that, there's all these other avenues that you can go through to get a game made anyway. I mean, this week, the second part of that Broken Age yeah. game finally came out. So, you know. I mean, you lose some companies. We lost a claim. Does anybody care? No. Not really. We lost the Tari. Does anybody care? No. Because a claim, I, you know, they ran their shit to the ground, right? Like, you know, right. what was the last claim game release? that you really cared about? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, if, you, if they're the games that you care about, they're doing well. And all the other companies there, they'll grow and, and make something, you know, or they'll, they'll go away and you'll get other companies like Bethesda, you know, came out of nowhere, really. I mean, they made stuff on the PC, like, you know, the original Elder Scrolls and all that kind of stuff, but they were just a small nothing, and now they're huge today. So that's just what happens. Yep. You know, somebody will fill the space. It's a worldwide thing. You know, Chinese are getting game systems and stuff. They're getting into it. Um, they got 1.2 billion people over there or something like that. Yeah. Eventually, they're going to just start pouring their cash into making video games. And we're all going to be better for it. So uh, just hold on to your hats because there's going to be a lot more going on than what we've had yeah. for the past. I mean, it's mostly just been an American and Japanese dominated industry. I know there's some European companies and stuff, but, you know, I, I think that the American and Japanese industry kind of calls the shots. And I think that um, as things start to transition and shift, as China gets bigger and India gets bigger, we're going to see a lot more... Um, digital entertainment come out of those countries as well as um europe and the united states and japan etc so that um we're just going to have way more it's just going to be way more i mean how long until china comes out with their own game system mm, that's a good question i mean really yeah yeah it it, 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 it there's so many people over there that it, it's got to be you know it's got to be on somebody's drawing board at this point and um you know it's and, we're all gonna, you know, we're gonna have more choice. And for and 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 again, for a lot of these things, I mean, like, I think that, I think that, well, I don't, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the sales figures are looking like, but like last year, Ubisoft didn't really, they, like, they, they, right. they didn't do really well. Like, I'm curious to know how their games are going to be sell. Like, if anybody is going to, if they're going to be able to whip people back into a frenzy over the division less than a year out from. You know, and, and look, Watch Dogs is not a shitty game. It's just it right. kind of ended up getting a little duller as time went on. So I don't know. I yeah. yeah, there's I think there's still plenty of opportunity, especially like I said, if you go to Steam and you take a look at the at the indie stuff that's released over there. The, the game that yeah. we played in early access that came out last week called Crypt of the Necro Dancer. That's like a rhythm based roguelike. Just like what? Uh, where you just you jump it around a dungeon and you have to hit monsters to the beat of a song. It's fucking crazy. There's all kinds of crazy shit going on. There. <laughs> uh, all right, next up, jump, uh, jump kick. Yeah, exactly. It's th that game is really weird. It's really bizarre. I mean, I you know I was uh, Kevin. I just like I said, I just recently started getting into MOBAs. Right, that's a whole. You're right. That's a whole just time sink of a of a genre of game that I've never touched before, right? That I feel like most people outside of like really hardcore people that we're, we're only just now starting to see the beginning of like with the new, with the heroes of the storm coming out that we're on the verge of, of blizzard bringing like, cause I played Dota and I played heroes of the storm and like I could, it, Jason Murphy could play heroes of the storm, right? Jason Murphy right. could not play Dota. There's just too much there for him to deal with. Um, Sure. So I'm looking forward to. I think we're right on the cusp of just seeing Blizzard take another, you know, another like what they did with WoW, right? Where they took a very complicated type of game and then they just stripped it down to the point where fucking everybody was playing it. And I'd love to see that kind of esports MOBA stuff start to just ooze out into, you know, into a place where it's like you don't have to spend 200 hours getting good at the game before you can even, or 200 hours getting bad at the game before you can even start playing it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we got a couple more questions here. One quick one, a little bit longer. This one comes in from Pedro, who says, Hello, Jeff, an awesome guest. Uh, this is Pedro once again reaching out from the faraway planet of Chicago to our lords and planet Austin. Are we... I'd, okay, something different happened there. Uh, this question is mainly for Jeff, but uh, the <laughs> awesome guest can pitch in if you have experience with the game I'm about to mention. And, Kevin, I'm pretty sure that you do. Uh, Jeff, seeing as how you never shut up about Bloodborne or the Souls games, I want to know your opinion on a game that you once wouldn't shut up about either. Trespasser. 
<laughs> the reason I ask you, <laughs> Lord Jeff, is because, one, this is a game I actually played and somehow completed when I was eight years old. And two, I know wow. you have strong feelings about that game, but I can never find you talking about it in the vast ocean of the Internet. And three, uh, <laughs> while we can all agree this game was uh, testicle shitting, recycled piss, even for its time, some people now look at the technology uh, rather than the gameplay that helped inspire other games like Half-Life and Surgery, the Surgery Simulator. Uh, do you think that these reasons are enough to give Trespasser a pass today? Or is it still a pile of rotting goat corpses that are being eaten by flying pieces of shit? Thanks for answering my question. Keep up the amazing work, Pedro. Uh, thank you, Pedro, for reminding me of, oh, my God, fucking Jurassic Park Trespasser. You're such, a, such an unqualified pile of garbage. No, yeah. there's no, there's no, okay, uh, I gotta, I gotta, it's like I gotta tell Nobody them. remembers that game finally. <laughs> I, I, I think that... <laughs> that dude's the only dude. You and me and Pedro here might be the only people who remember that game, period, right? Like, yeah. uh, this is one of those games that, for those of you who don't know about Jurassic Park Trespasser, um, it was, oh my god, it was, it was supposed to be... This is this is this you know what this is actually a perfect example of the opposite of um, our last question where somebody tried to do something that was like oh my god this is going to be like super Joe's question it's going to be it's going to be super innovative it's going to be fa- nobody's ever seen anything like this before it's going to be fantastic we're going to throw all this money at it it's going to be yes be- long before the colonial marine controversy about what a game is going to be like yep. um and being disappointed, Trespasser, that that stands as the model of somebody, you know, seriously like Lionhead style, slinging some BS, mm-hmm. uh, and then you actually sit down and play it, and you're like, "Wow, this is horrible." Okay, so so put the timeline. Jura- uh, no wait, this is the Lost World Jurassic Park. The second Jurassic Park movie came out in 1997. This came out in 1998. I think that there, I mean, there was like what? There was an SNES Jurassic Park game that I remember being okay where you yeah. played as a raptor, but Jurassic Park had that thing where it seemed like nobody could actually, this goes back to what we are talking about, Dune. Nobody could actually figure out how to make Jurassic Park into a good video game. Um, and so this one company had this idea. Uh, this was DreamWorks uh, developed this, published, published by EA, uh, Mini Driver was the main character. It had Richard Attenborough. <laughs> Steven Spielberg apparently worked on the script for it. It was supposed to be a story of this. Of the Mini Driver was this woman. She was stuck in Jurassic Park, and the whole game revolved around this horrible, horrible. Okay, no, it revolved around a really great idea that was implemented. It, that was probably far before its time where you basically could shove a virtual handout and interact with the world you could pick stuff up <laughs> you could stack up crates to jump over stuff you could pick up a gun bouncy crates mm-hmm. and you had to you had to manually aim down the iron sights using this i mean it was like playing surgery simulator right where you were controlling like fingers and a thumb and trying to twist the wrist the right direction and you would, I remember very specifically that you would look down at Mini Driver's boobs to see how much health you had left <laughs> because she had a little heart <laughs> tattoo on her, one of her boobs and that that heart would go down because it, no, it had no HUD. It had no UI. Right. Um, so, yeah, this was – and I kept reading, like, articles about it, about how good it was going to be and how it was just revolutionary. And, oh, my God, it's, a, it's a fantastic looking at, at all this jungle and dinosaurs. And yeah, it's going to be great. And then I, I I downloaded a I think I've downloaded I think I'm I think uh, I think Kevin I don't think I'm gonna I think I'll be all right with the secret police here it was 1998 uh, I downloaded a Whereas <laughs> like early leaked copy of it like a development copy sure um, and it was really bad and then it was like <laughs> and then the day it came out I took that day off work and I went to go buy the game wow. and I brought it home I thought like ah maybe they fixed it it's gonna be totally great I installed it and I played it I tried it was like I god I tried for like three or four hours to like that game it just nope nope tears must have been coming down your face uh, you wasted a day uh, off on that crap well I suspect <laughs> the old days when I worked at Dell and they were handing out money like candy I didn't give a fuck I was just like yeah I'll go in mm. tomorrow I was, I, I, was too, I was too good for them to fire uh, but <laughs> uh, yep you guys should go I mean maybe I, I don't know if it's on Steam maybe I can go get it and see if it uh, if it today because I, I think I, I mean I, I, I think that I played it I uninstalled it and I I probably threw the disc away and then was just like, no more, never again, never again, <laughs> Jurassic Park Trespasser. 
Um, yeah, it's a truly terrible game. It's like, uh, do you remember uh, Die by the Sword? Like, Die by the oh, Sword actually that... kind of worked in that fashion. It's vague to me. I remember it, but I don't think I played it. It was like it was a third person action game where you use the mouse to manually swing the arm of your barbarian, you know, uh ass kicker or whatever where you would Boy, I remember that. Yeah. Hold down yeah. a button for kind of back and forth and so you ended up you doing like these really slow looking, just horrible swipes left and right <laughs> with the mouse and it was just it was awful. But but you know what? I, I feel sometimes, Kevin, when we talk to the people, like I don't really know what the actual what the actual age demographic is for Rage Select. I mean, I have an idea from the YouTube page, but I, you know, these people could just be lying. But I feel like a lot of times people like to look back at the the old days and be like, ah, the golden age of gaming, and they always forget <laughs> that there was a shitload of really terrible video games. I mean, just yes. like. Absolutely. Oh, they were so bad. Voice acting, if there even was voice acting, broken games. I paid fifty dollars for Battle Cruiser three thousand <laughs> AD, and it was broken. Woo! There wasn't even such a thing as a patch. Like for like, it was hard to even get connected to the internet at that point. And that right. was published by Take Two, right? There was a <laughs> right, right. There was a time when Take Two was a garbage company. They produced this game called yeah. Hell, a cyberpunk thriller that was just yes. Oh, it was so terrible. That. Just terrible. Ter yep. oh, it was so bad. You know, this is back in the days when people held up the Journeyman Project like it was the greatest game of all time, and it wasn't. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so yeah, always keep in mind that you know. I feel like when people look back, it's like, yeah, if all you ever played was the best games that came out in 1994, all, both of them, right, or all three of them, uh, you know, <laughs> if you never went through and, and were trying to figure out something to play and, and ended up with a broken, fucked up, stupid, shitty, and it cost $50, and of course you can't get a refund, that you don't know, you don't know what we're talking about. Yep. <laughs> Uh, all right, one last question, then we're out. Uh, this one is, I'm reading this one just for the subject line alone, uh, called Dead Cat Bounce. Don't worry, no <laughs> actual cats have been harmed in the making of this question. Wow. says, hey, Jeff and Kevin, I heard a business theory called a Dead Cat Bounce, where the stock of a failing company will momentarily spike before its ultimate demise. My question, are there any video game franchises fail, uh, failing that... Let that we see that are failing or have failed that put out a great or relatively good in their franchise title right before they were scrapped. Uh, can't think of one myself, but I defer to your judgment. Also consider this an alpha protocol style game featuring the cast of Archer where you create your own agent and play missions where Archer actively sabotages you by breaking your stealth to do crazy shit. Apologies for the long email, but not really Daniel. Um, yeah. I feel as long as it was better than alpha protocol. Bah, bah. Never, never miss a chance to zing on Obsidian, Kevin. Even though uh, <laughs> I did play all the way through it, Pillars of Eternity was was seemed like it was pretty good. Um, mm, I never played that one. I'm trying to think of man. I'm trying to think of stuff. I think that I would probably have an easier time with games that seemed like they were really great, but then got canceled right before a company went out of business uh, than I would with actual. Like the the last game, I don't know. I mean, I guess um, you know, I liked Bioshock Infinite quite a bit. Then Irrational got shut down. Um, I can always say that Prey Two looked like a really interesting game uh, before before it got taken out of Human Head's hands. I don't know. This is a very specific set of criteria. Um, can you think of anything that ca like a, like a game that was going to come out but never did? Is that what we're talking about? I think about? what he's asking is like a like a game where like a company like it was the last game that a either a franchise or a company put out before they either like went out of business or the or the franchise itself got canceled, like the last kind of gasp before they went out of business uh, for whatever reason. I almost, okay, it's weird because I almost feel like like in that in that case that they don't. Like if the if the game is any good, then the company doesn't end up. Well, I mean, I guess they dissolve Ultima Nine. They dissolve companies all the goddamn time, whether the game is good or not. They just so. dissolve some Australian company that made a game that was 
fairly successful, I think, but it just wasn't enough. I can't even remember who that well, was. It was 2K Australia with uh, Borderlands, the pre-sequel. That was last week. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, you know. Hmm. Um, Call of Duty? <laughs> um. uh, before, well, this is right before Weston Zampella left. Um, Ion Storm with Days X. Oh, you know that's that actually, yeah, that's a that's a good one, and as well as um, uh, Looking Glass made a bunch of really awesome games, and then they just kind of went out of business. What Th- Thief yeah. Two, I guess. Like big huge games, I think. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. This that's a very specific question, and I don't think that anything really just comes to mind right away. So sorry, Daniel. Right. I don't really have anything right. for that. Well, um, I think that that is all the show we have for today, Kevin. Dun, dun. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming uh, for coming on. Um, sure. Great. If Always you guys fun. have questions, send them to mail at RageSelect.com, and we'll see you next week for another episode of the Rage Select Podcast, where we track all of your data.